So that was my original Firefest, but then as we sat down here today, um, my new Firefest came, and it was a text from Billy Football with two pictures of. On today's part in my take, we have our yearly combine interview with Adam Schefter. Great time catching up with Shefty. He gives us some nuggets about the league. We talk about his breaking news of Punxsutawney Phil. Maybe we get an answer to the Dez tape. Stephen Shea gets a couple uh, questions in because he's a Shefty super fan. We were at the Combine. We're going to talk a little Combine. We got the report card for the NFLPA. Hank's number two Patriot of all time. Wow. Big Dude, one. That looked like I surprised you with that. No. You weren't ready for it. We're going <laughs> to do Fire Fest of the, the week. We got a great Friday show for everyone. Taking you in the weekend, and it's all brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. Are you all about the NBA action? You've got to try Pick 6, the newest fantasy app from DraftKings, an official partner of the NBA. Right now, new customers can earn a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 in Pick 6 credits. When you deposit $5 or more, getting started is simple. Just download the DraftKings Pick 6 app. Sign up with code TAKE. Pick at least two players and choose if they'll have more or less of a stat like, will they score more or less than 30 points if his name is Donovan Mitchell? The answer is no. Or have more or less than eight assists if his name is Donovan Mitchell? The answer is no. Lock him in and compete against other for others for a shot at a huge cash prize. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app now and get started with code TAKE. New customers can earn a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 in Pick 6 credits when you deposit $5 or more only on DraftKings Pick 6 with code TAKE. The crown is yours. So go download that DraftKings app right now, the Pick 6 app. And like I said, you deposit and they match up to $100 in Pick 6 credits when you deposit $5 or more. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Today is Friday, March 1st. This is March. We've arrived, boys. That's wild. So we're recording this on Leap Day, which really threw off my entire calendar. Happy birthday to us, by the way. Eight years we've been doing this podcast. Our second birthday today. That kind of blows my mind. Yeah. yeah. Eight years? Uh-huh. So we, so the, uh, High school uh, and college. Yeah. Whoa. For That's some people, crazy. yeah. The, uh, yeah, some people take longer. The um, it, it's it's crazy. I was looking back because I couldn't remember the exact timeline. The first episode debuted, I think, on March third or fourth, but we had recorded it on the leap day mm -hmm. in PFT's house in Austin. That's right, in my kitchen. Chris Jones's dick flopped out at the combine. It was one of those things where it was meant to be. Yeah, to, to have that story break the morning that we record our first episode, where a man's penis broke through his shorts while he ran the 40 yard dash at the combine. It felt like we were always destined to do the show. And if you put it into perspective, if you had told us eight years ago that the man's penis who flopped out in the, at the combine was going to be a three time Super Bowl champion, we probably would have said, okay. Yeah, I would have said, sure. Yeah, okay, he is a football yeah, I mean, player. Yeah, he is going to play football. He so play, that, he's a good yeah, football player. Happen. So maybe he'll get on a good team and they'll win the, the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's a pretty big whoa. And then, then he would be a free agent. Eight years from that to, to that day, <laughs> his free agency looms. Just that, crazy. That Full first episode moment. was yeah. also recorded at 7 a.m. in the morning. Did we? Th no, that no, was no. the second episode. No, we tried. We were like, we're going to record. No, 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 no. But the first episode we recorded in PFT's house. Yeah. In like the afternoon. Did we record some of it in the beginning? In the morning? Possibly. Oh, we recorded the majority of it, Possibly. I think. Yeah, we did the segments. At a normal time, and right, then we'll we do the, the current events people, stuff. Yeah, people don't people forget that the first week of Pardon My Take was a morning show, which was the worst idea ever. Because not only are we not morning people, even though actually this is we should just make it every time we do we're doing a the year anniversary, we have to record it in the morning. It's the worst this idea. This is ever. the morning right now. No, uh, <laughs> but we're not morning people. And then also we found out very quickly that it was an unsustainable uh, practice because we would wake up, 
record at eight in the morning. And then I would just text Hank every five minutes for the next five hours being like, is the podcast ready? Yeah. Is it up? <laughs> As stories were like breaking, we're like, wait, should we add to this? Should yeah. we add to this? <laughs> so, so the problem with doing, well, the easy thing about doing a morning show is that you have the topics that are already laid out for you because the storylines are already out there. Yeah, the game's so already then, happened. Then you get to react to like the storylines to the storylines. We're down in the trenches right after the games are over. We're creating it. We're like... We're farming that like pure uncut cocaine of sports takes right after the games, and then somebody else turns into crack the next morning. That's the easy part. Yeah, but we're down there doing the hard work. The and I mean, credit to us uh, for realizing it was a terrible idea almost immediately. That and the reggaeton horn, mm -hmm. um, and you know, changing on the fly and becoming a night podcast. Do you want to bring back a segment for today's show? We could do four good minutes. We could do hurt or injured Kyle Filipowski. Uh, he is injured, severe injury. Jay Billis. Jay Billis told me that he was sore. That's an injury. I've I've thought back about the Jay Billis. I, I want to give. I know the AWLs didn't love that interview because we don't usually do contentious interviews. And I give all the credit in the world for Jay Billis for just coming on because he probably knew it was going to go that way. I'm. I, I need you guys to promise me that you'll stand up for me and with me next time someone says I use the wrong word because I'm not as dumb as he was making me feel in that moment when he said I would use disingenuous incorrectly. That's literally what I did. Yeah. I told him. I was, I was like, when you said that... You need to like do a screeching halt because he made me feel really dumb. Well, that's the Duke in him. Yep. It's kind of like your default setting. If you go to Duke, it's like, well, this person doesn't have a Duke education, so clearly he's not as smart as I am. But in that moment, I did tell him. I was like, no, I think he did use the word correctly because... Jay is smart enough to understand there's a difference between Kansas storming the court right. and uh, Butler storming the court, right? There's a difference between those two things. And also, yes, Kansas' football program, they the students have stormed the field many forgot, times. Forgot to say that there's two moments this week where I've, I, I'm like Costanza walking away being like, damn, I should have thought of that. It's the Kansas storms the field in football, and Hank rooted for Tom Brady at the box when he was trying to bash Patrick Kane. That's true. <laughs> yeah, those are the two. Those are the two moments. Of like, damn it, you got to be smarter than that, Dan. It's very true. Yeah, it's, it, Hank was the biggest. <laughs> the biggest. Well, yeah. people were like, in my life. dude, how do you not bring up Hank in the Bucks?" And I was like, "Fuck!" But God he was a Bucks it. fan, and then he was a Cowboys fan. Yeah, that's true. He did turn his back on Tom Brady. That's too. true. But eight years. I love you guys. This has been the. I mean, we we not to get sentimental, but it's obviously changed our life so significantly. To the point where it's like, I can't imagine if this didn't happen. We've had this conversation, PFT, I think when we were at the Arizona Bowl driving back, just the two of us, and we're like, could you imagine if like this didn't happen? Like, this is our lives. This is our life's work. Yeah, this is... Uh, it is. It's our life's it's work. Our, it's our legacy. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> we're, we, 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 it, this podcast is our legacy. We will it'll be in the first like line of the obituary, unless one of us dies in a crazy way then that would probably and, be the first line. Or unless somebody uh, commits multiple bank robberies and has a lawyer that goes on TV to use football analogies to describe your guilty plea. Chiefs of lawyer rocks. That he dude was, is awesome. I have a problem, though. I really wish he didn't say his government name. Xander? Xavier. Xavier, yeah. Xavier something or other. And I was like, that kind of ruins it. He's Chief Saholic. But yeah, we had Chief Saholic lawyer show up again, and he uh, started by saying, Chief Saholic, uh, the government has been blitzing and Xavier's pocket was collapsing, but today Xavier stepped into the pressure. Uh -huh. And then he continued to say, we know if he stumbled and he fell, he didn't let his knee touch the ground. <laughs> that's, that's when you know you got a good lawyer. But he did take a plea, when I think the very definition of a plea is like kneeling. Yeah, kneeling the ball out. Kneel, kneeling the ball out, so yes. In a loss. He did, in, in a loss. In he took a, loss. a you're, loss. You're down 40, and you're like, I don't want to get anyone injured, let's just kneel it out. Yeah, it, the, the lawyer making all the football analogies is awesome. The one thing I would tweak about the lawyer, because every time he does a press conference, he loves hammering home the fact that his client is a football fan. Yeah. Which is cool. I wish we know too. Yeah. Just so you know, we we do know he is Chief Saholic. That's the reason that we're talking about him. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't be talking about him otherwise. I would like if the lawyer was a little bit like more of a football guy. It still seems from time to time like when he's talking, it's something that I think that Chief Saholic writes these statements yeah. and then has the lawyer deliver them. When I would I would prefer it if the lawyer was like a big football guy, like making these analogies on his own. But once he runs out of the ones that that Xavier gives to him, then he just goes back into lawyer speech as, as his default. Agreed. But I, I do. I, I like the theater of the lawyer being like, OK, Chief Saholic, uh, 
You guys know he's a football fan. Where Here's how I'm going to describe him accepting a plea deal on multiple bank robberies to go to prison for years is by just giving you a football game. And it's smart because, like you said, no one cares about this if it was just a regular person. I, we, you know that football fans are tuning in to any time this lawyer gets in front of a microphone, so he has dumbed it down to where, like, okay, all right, so he was getting a blitz. All right, he's stepping up in the pressure. Mm. I see it. Okay, yeah, didn't get it. Need in touch the ground. Mm. All right, yeah, you know what? He's free. You know, in Saudi Arabia for stealing, they would take a hand off. <laughs> so I, would, I, would, I would like to see him expand his repertoire a little bit and, yeah. and dive a little bit deeper. But I think if you were to ask Chief Saholic, would you trade how many years in prison? A lot. A lot? Like, let's say a lot. Let's say five years in prison. Would five you, to a lot. Would you trade five years in prison for a dynasty? The answer for Chief Saholic is a resounding yes. Yes. And I hope that they let him wear his wolf costume in jail. Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be. that. Uh, although, I feel like there's some kinks that would probably be attracted to that. Like, some there's furries? There's got to be some furries in jail. You think there are furries in prison? They're like, we've been waiting all our life for a furry to show up. Yeah. He just gets humped all the time? Yeah. Um, speaking of the Chiefs. We had the NFLPA uh, report card come out, which this rocks. So this is the second year in a row that they've done this. Um, the commanders are last. It feels personal. It does feel personal. But you have a new owner who is um, also sitting in on every quarterback interview. Can we take it? Let's take, one, let's take it one, <laughs> one slight at a yeah. time, please. Okay? Yeah, Josh Harris is sitting will, in on every quarterback interview at Combine Week. Just directly behind. Yeah. I will address all the That's accusations totally one at a time, but it's not fair to put both the report card and Harris on me at the same time. That's You're on the Tepper spectrum. It feels it feels personal, the NFLPA report card. No, 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 no. Let's talk about Josh Harris going to these No, interviews. we're taking Real these quick. one at a time. We'll go back to it because I actually wasn't going to talk minus, about the commanders. An F minus is not a grade. It is. It does not exist. 49 it's an, or, or it's below. F. It's an F. That's what an F is. An F minus is not a real actual thing that people get. To, to have treatment of families, to get an F minus in treatment of families, seems like uh, the very worst thing that you can say about somebody. Like, okay, uh, they've got a great strength coach, but they fucking hate children. Yeah, they're bad parents of <laughs> yeah. these families. I, I actually wasn't going to talk about the commanders much with this because it's almost like the sun will rise, the commanders will finish last in this poll. It wasn't yeah. anything new. So I do want to go back to Josh Harris real quick. He's, he's sitting in all these interviews. I think – here's my spend zone. I think he's – evaluating the people that he hired to evaluate. He's the evaluating the evaluators. Yes, he's sitting there. He's watching He's watching Adam and Dan Quinn uh, do conduct the interviews with the quarterbacks to see what kind of questions they're asking as part of his ongoing evaluation process of his own team. So totally normal. Very normal. Very normal behavior but from Josh Harris, mm -hmm. not a control freak. Very normal. Very yeah. normal. I'm fine with it. I think it's good. What At what point do you think he will uh... – Insert himself into the game plan meetings. Never. Will that be Thursdays or Fridays? Never. Never. It's not going to happen. He's going to do the walkthroughs. He's going to be like, hey, you know what? Let me let me just be under center for this walkthrough. I, if you're Dan Quinn and, and the other coaches in these meetings, how do you not yeah. ask him for his opinion? And then do you have to take you it? You have to take it. Like, That's the whole point. Yeah, like okay. I, I, I can you can't have him like, there. What would you think, Josh? Yeah. And then... How do you not Would, listen to who, what he says? Yeah, he's going to be like, you're like, what do you think, Josh? He's like, I really like Drake May. And the, and the guys in the room will be like, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say, Drake May. <laughs> yeah. I think that this is such a big decision for the future of the franchise that they want everybody in the room to be involved and on the same page going forward. Got it. I think it's like this is a decision that could – possibly change the direction in a much maybe we'll get f pluses in 10 years if we draft the right quarterback but what does he know what does josh harris know he knows people he's a people person he's, a people. <laughs> he's probably he's a asking, connector i would love it if josh harris was actually in the room asking them basketball questions you know what though pft now or that i'm hockey. thinking about it yeah. josh harris might just be in the room practicing his handshake yeah because he had that bad handshake so maybe he's just getting reps in it's the combine for him too where he's like i gotta I gotta learn how to shake hands again. Joe Buck had the bad bad handshake. In well, Josh hands. Harris had the bad. He did the. I think uh, uh, I think it's uh. completely normal. Robert Kraft was intimately involved in everything going on behind the scenes with the quarterbacks in New England, and his decision was like, "I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Bill coach the team." But he was involved in all those conversations. I think that Josh Harris is any any one of us. If you owned an NFL team, you would want to be in the room, right? Right, but that analogy doesn't really work because Robert Kraft would have, if he was the one making the decisions, he would have had Bledsoe start. And Josh Harris is now going to have 
whoever he wants to have start. But it's the same thing where you're just because your owner's in the room doesn't mean he's the one making the decision. I think he's going to make some decisions. I think he's everything's going to be fine. Every everything's going to be wonderful. I choose to not dwell on this. I too have much good news because for you. I'm delusional. You know what? I have good news for you, PFT. Okay, so back to the NFLPA report card. Um, this reporter, Nick Cordy. Uh, K O R T E. I just want to shout him out because he did good work with this on Twitter. Nick Cordy, he did a list of all the grades, uh, from the NFLPA and then categorized them with teams that the owner purchased the team and teams that the owner inherited the team. And I think it's, I think it's nine out of the top ten Packers, not included because they they're weird and they pretend that everyone owns a piece of the team. Nine out of the top ten, not ex- excluding the Packers, uh, were teams that the owner purchased the team. And then all the bad grades, essentially, were teams where the owners inherited the team, basically fail sons and daughters uh, who are driving whatever they're, they inherited into the ground, which usually happens in all these situations. So that's good for you. It is a positive thing. Uh, the Dolphins got first by a mile. In the Dolphins and card. Vikings one and two so easy the, yeah the Dolphins report card was a minus a a a a a a minus a plus a a no Pre- notes pretty good um, the the strength and conditioning line uh, always stands out to me I think last year the Ravens got like an F yeah in strength and conditioning um, the the Commanders are one good grade being an A for a strength and conditioning coach seemed to me at first like okay at least we have a great strength program and then I thought about it more. I don't think I'd want my players to give my strength and conditioning coach an A because don't you want like that guy to be the hardest person in the world on you? I think like, you kind of want to hate your strength coach a little bit, right? Yeah. Like maybe you don't want an F, but it, getting like a C plus or a B, you want that guy to like push you to be super, super uncomfortable all the time. Yeah, that's true. Like, if your strength coach is welcoming you with uh, with like cookies and cupcakes every morning for, for your morning lift, um, and you're like super happy with him, like your best friend, probably not that effective of a, of a strength coach. Yeah, you, you don't want him to be well liked. Okay, yeah. I think that might be more also the facilities too, although that was in there as well. The uh, the other funny things that came out was the Chiefs are winning Super Bowls while everyone hates everyone except Andy Reid. They basically got like D's, C's, D's, and F's in everything but Andy Reid, who got an A plus, including the owner got an F minus. Because uh, the story goes that the Chiefs wanted a new locker room because their locker room was very outdated. They won the Super Bowl last year. The players came back. They got a new locker room. And by that, I mean they went from stools to chairs with backs to them. That mm-hmm. was the big upgrade. It's huge. That's That, though, is crazy to me. Like, if you're Clark Hunt, the amount of money that Patrick Mahomes is is, is pumping into your franchise right now you should be wanting to spend every dollar on making it a fun place to be. It should just be whatever Patrick Mahomes wants. Correct. It's crazy. Like that, I don't understand any of these. I, the, the the report card is actually good though because they they had a note like, remember the Jaguars had rats last year. They yep. got a new facility. They don't have rats anymore. So it's actually changing things. Like even the Bengals, one of the cheapest owners in all of sports. Uh, they were complaining because they had to pay for their their food. Mm-hmm. Now he was like, hey, guess what? I'm a, a billionaire. I'm going to help you guys out. I'm going to give you free food, three three free meals on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Just Wednesdays. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, just Wednesdays. But that's a step in the right direction. <laughs> that's such a hilarious compromise to make. Uh, but that's essentially what we do at Barstool Sports. It's like once a I'll week say, you get a free meal. I'll say this. Wednesday's not a bad day, day, though. Because Monday, I think most guys, they usually give them off. Tuesday they got to go in. Wednesday is the, it's hump day. Mm-hmm. It's it's a shitty day. It's the no man's land of the week. So three f- free meals. That's a perfect day to do it. I wouldn't want to do it on Friday. Friday's Friday. Friday's Friday, and you want you want to kind of have your free plate lunch on Friday. Now the Eagles, they uh, they gave their coach an A. Mm. Treatment of families C. Team travel C. Now I, with team travel, I think it's impossible to get a high grade in team travel. Everyone the, hates travel. The Patriots have two planes. And they they're, got a D. They're probably old. Mm-hmm. Old planes. Well, they're also team travel is... Um, what you know was, who else had two planes? <laughs> who? The, the, the Bills. Oh, sorry. Uh, the Bucks had a line where they force uh, their players to pay $1,700. I think it was $1,750 if they want to stay alone when they travel. 
Yeah, that was one of the options that, that that's like crazy. per per travel. Yeah, yeah. teams per got, week. Yeah, teams seventeen hundred. Yeah, that seems like a lot. It does. Seems Bad like somebody's franchise. pocketing some money off that. Yeah, that definitely. You're you're they're upcharging the hotel room. It's one guy on the team that's like, yeah, you got to pay me seventeen hundred dollars for that. And Stephen Ch- Stephen Che is here, so he's gonna. We, I asked him to do a fire fest. Why don't you save your thoughts? You can respond to all these uh, when we get to fire fest. But the other the other uh, funny wrinkles in this. Uh, the Broncos uh, had a bunch of cars stolen from them at training camp. That was kind of cool. Cars? Yeah. Yeah, that is um, cool. They, what was it? They're stra- uh, there were multiple cars stolen from the parking lot of the mandated team hotel during training camp. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Someone's that doing is- Fast and Furious it, with the Broncos it's, cars. It's probably just future. Yeah. He just run up there with his crew. Yeah. And then the other one that was, because the timing of this, I think they did it in like the summer and like early fall. Um, so most of the coaches got like A's and B's. Arthur Smith got a C plus, Ron Rivera got a C. The only one who got a D was Josh McDaniels. So it's good to know that even in a blind poll, everyone fucking hates Josh McDaniels. I love that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's actually jo- Josh McDaniels grade actually like validates this entire poll where they're like, yeah, they're giving honest answers. Josh McDaniels is a fucking douchebag. He got a D. So I noticed a lot of really bad grades when it comes to the locker room. Like, across the board, players are not happy with Which their locker crazy. room. Which is crazy. But my theory is that college locker rooms have gotten so out of control good that it's a step back when you go to the NFL. Like, college coaches should be like, yeah, you can go pro and make millions of dollars, but you don't get the barber chair. Yeah, the Chiefs don't have a slide. Yeah, there's no water. So there's no waterfall. Before NIL, that was the only thing they had. Yeah, it's yeah. true. They're like we, we could, we can't spend money on players. We'll just get a new locker. I, room. I remember yeah. I went into like maybe it was like four or five years ago. I went to Clemson's training facility and they had a literal slide uh, that we weren't allowed to use. But I, I, I basically bullied Brandon Walker to use it, and then he got yelled at right away, which is. A very funny visual, just a big old man going down a slide and then us training staff member being like, hey, don't use that slide. But they told me, they were like, yeah, we just opened this like two years ago and it's already outdated. Yeah. So you're right. Like the, the college locker rooms and the training facilities are insane. It's an arms race. It's like every year before NIL, every single year, uh, teams would put all their expendable money into upgrading the locker room. It's like players are like, can we please have $1,000 a month to buy food? They're like... Guess what? We got a new waterfall. Yep. Putt putt. <laughs> yeah, putt putt. Let's go. <laughs> We're gonna there was a like batting cage. But yeah, the uh I love this NFL PA poll. It's it's great just because it's just a bunch of uh anonymous snitching. And you if you're an owner, you have to dread this. And I also I still will never understand, and maybe this is just how I'm wired, but like if I had billions of dollars, I would spend a good portion of that money to make sure that the assets that I have on my team are very well taken care of. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Maybe that's easier said than done, but... Patrick Mahomes would get whatever he wanted. Well, he got it back to his chair. Yeah, that's pretty nice. (laughs) That's huge. Uh, The Patriots got some shitty grades too, Hank. I know. They got bad grades with coaching staff, bad grades with ownership too. Ownership, Mm. travel. But that's where it's like, it's hard for me to really believe the travel thing when they have two planes. Yeah. So that kind of makes the whole list. What, what, what's your thing with two planes? He just wants two planes. You have two planes. How can travel planes? be bad if you have your literal own plane? Like, Well, they're probably old planes. Yeah, they might be What does that even planes? mean? Like, they could be planes from 20 years ago. I, I want a plane where I'm able to lay down. They could be a Boeing 737 MAX. Yeah. Did you think about that? No, I think they're big-ass, nice planes. I've seen them. Okay. Um, all right, anything else uh, from this? I mean, it's, yeah. It's the, great uh, that it comes out right now. The The leading sentence of the commander's locker room issue uh, was multiple sewage leaks Oof. contributed to their F minus. I would say that that probably does it. One yeah. sewage leak is, is an F. That's so, I'll give you the F minus on the locker room because of the multiple sewage leaks. All the other F minuses, I think, are personal. Yeah. The Bucks also had bugs in their showers. Yikes. That's Florida, though. Yeah, that is Florida. There also was the... Everyone made the same joke at the same time, which it's a funny joke. But I think the Chargers, uh, there was a line about the Chargers charging extra for uh, daycare. And everyone was like, well, if you have Phil Rivers and Antonio Cromartie, you need to do this. Yeah. So um, congrats to everyone for making a very funny joke. It's a good joke. Yeah, it's a good joke. Mm -hmm. Uh, All right. What else we got going on? We you see the college football playoff is already uh, ready to change again. I saw that. Yeah. Rules. 
I like it. I don't like it because I, I like the, the first iteration that they came out with. Now it's starting to get too confusing. They're starting to Jeff DeLoify the college football playoffs. <laughs> what are they like, changing it they're to? They're going to change it to 14. They're going to give the Big Ten and the SEC three automatic qualifiers. So the top three in each of those conferences will automatically be in. The ACC and the, uh, and the Big 12 will get two automatic qualifiers. And then there'll be one automatic qualifier from the group of five. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I like the old way. So here's the only thing that I, I like about it, because I was talking, we we are in Indy, so we get to meet a bunch of people. Um, I, I met Ross Dellinger. He's a Yahoo uh, Sports college football reporter. Really good guy. We're going to have him on the show this fall because he knows a shitload about college football. He was saying, because I was like, why would they play conference championship? Like, why would they have conference championships if the top three go? Like, there's no reason to play that extra game. And he, it was a hypothesis because there's nothing set in stone. He said that it will eventually p get to a point where it's the fourth and the third will play for that third spot, which that kind of rocks. So yeah. if you're a fourth place team in the Big Ten, you play in the conference championship game or whatever they're going to call it. You play in an extra game. To, like it's like a play in to the the playoffs. I get that, but also we're we're setting up these rules for maybe 10, 20 years down the line. These rules are still going to exist, and the college football landscape changes every like two to three years. They'll find so it. So it's like who knows what the conferences will eventually look like then, and giving three automatic qualifiers. I don't know. It feel I like I like the way it was set up. It was easier to understand for dummies like me. I agree, but they're they're going to do something that. The I think the initial plan was like the Big Ten and the SEC were like we get four teams automatic, so they're playing a little strong arm with them. I still think it's going to be no different than uh, cable to streaming back to cable, where we're bundling all the streaming now. They're going to get to a point where they just start making like regional divisions, and it's going to be like, well, okay, so Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA are in a division. Why don't we just call it the Pac Four, mm -hmm. and then we'll get there, and then we'll be happy. Yeah, so this new proposal, it's not ratified yet, right? This no, is just it wouldn't happen until at least 2026. So 24 okay. and 25 will have the current college football set up. Okay. Yes, what I is this year? This year is the current college football set up. With 12, 12. okay. Yeah, yeah. 24, 25 will have the 12 teams, the four buys, their automatic championship winners. Uh, so it still matters for the championship game. And then uh, the other at large. And then this is just something they've been – they're going to do it because essentially what they're doing is they're going to – the Big Ten and the SEC are going to strong arm everyone else because they are the, the, the number one and two asset in college football. And they're like, we need our teams guaranteed to be in because they have all the power. Mm -hmm. And that's just how it's going to work. Um, can we do a Hank's out in the streets? Sure. Or Hank explains Ooh, it. I like it. What's going on with Meek Mill? Yeah. So I, I I just pulled up Meek Mill's timeline to to pull up the relevant tweets that he fired off yesterday. Some all timers. Um, he's putting on a masterclass right now in terms of uh, retweeting to flood the timeline. I think he's got like thirty or forty retweets in a row. He's got new music there. coming out. New that's, music so coming that's out. what's happening right here. <laughs> so <laughs> the the Meek he's trending because he's got a fire new album coming out. He's independent. He's putting out music independently, so they're trying to take him down, yeah, according so he, to Meek Mill. He's got some serious heaters. One of them was, when I got a girl around me, I'm fucking her twice a day, LOL, ask some of your favorites. Pussy don't control me, but it's like a high. One love to the gay people, but that juicy <laughs> pussy do it for me. Mm -hmm. I done ran red lights to get that feeling. You're all weird on here like devils, LOL. How much do you guys like pussy? I love love pussy. I think I would go... I think I would go through yellow light i don't know if i'd run a red you don't want to be said would, uh, would you the want, red light cameras that's I would, not worth it i would speed i would drive i would drive over the speed limit yeah i would for too. that for that gush, gush for that juicy pussy and then he also had uh i'm from philly i don't do coke or freaky ass molly nobody won't even offer me coke because i'm that heavy does that mean fat or is it no it's just like he he's such a non-coke guy like you wouldn't even think to be like hey you want some of this oh because uh -huh. i assume that was just a fat thing where it's like you don't offer a fat guy coke because like they're not doing it they might die they're fat no well, they, also it might, like, it might kill them if they if they were if they did coke they would be skinnier yeah it's like why waste your time with this guy what does yeah i'm from philly have to do with that like i'm from philly so no one offers me coke i don't think that's how it works and then yeah he he said no man or what would ever approach me about gay activity and the whole place don't get flipped. Woke up seeing this on every blog like they know I'm coming because there's a there's a court filing. Yeah, someone sued Diddy and there's been obviously a lot of allegations with Diddy the last, I don't know, three or four months. 
along these lines and someone sued him, one of his former workers or colleagues and in the lawsuit, it straight up said like he knew like he was there when Diddy had sexual relations with redacted and redacted. And then I don't know how court filings work and it doesn't really make sense for them to redact the names because at the bottom of the page, it had like an answer key that said, <laughs> mm-hmm. answer, to redact. it said, no, it said redacted person one is a rapper from Philadelphia who dated Nicki Minaj. Oh. Redacted person two is an R&B singer who just performed the Super Bowl. So redacted clearly number three is a Patriot fan who, who uh, produces a podcast. Yeah. No, it what that wasn't in there. But oh. clearly, Usher and P Diddy were the. I mean, Usher and Meek Mill were the the two redacted names, and then everyone has been talking about it. And Meek Mill is now just you know got it, claiming that they're trying to take him down because he's got a before his albums he was on a he label because he's got guy friends. Now he's oh, independent t- and they're he's they're trying, trying to put out down. music independently. And this oh. is the industry trying to take him down. They're got trying it. to take him down because he's too straight. Yeah, really. like he when he has a one girlfriend, love to the gays though. He, he has sex with women twice a day. Yep, it and could not be any more clear than that. Ask he's not. It's, he's not addicted to it either. No, he's, it's a high for him. One love to the gay people, but that juicy pussy do it for me. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's such an awesome thing to just type and then hit send on <laughs> <laughs> for me uh all right so that's hank hot in the streets brought back a segment for it kyle filipowski hurt or injured what bullshit that was by the dukes the dukies he was never even close to hurt jay billis will tell you that a soreness is an injury it is it is <sighs> then you I'm literally tweeted the yeah you literally tweeted on tuesday like i'm never doing a comment again i said sore. i might i said i'm contemplating Wham. retirement yeah but I haven't retired. I'm always contemplating retirement. Yeah. Same. It's I did. always on my mind when I get what, Listen, Sundays in the fall when we're working till 2 a.m., I get out of bed. I'm like a running back. It's like hard to go down the stairs. I'm like, should I hang it up? Yeah. Yeah. Bloggers but then and I podcasters. Get, I fall in love in the, with the game again come Thursday. We age like presidents. Four years is like 10 years for us. Yeah. We've been doing this for I eight did. years. We've been I, doing this for, for, two pre, for two terms. When I woke up. On on Tuesday morning, I was I was embarrassed to say like my legs were very sore from jumping three times. Yeah, <laughs> I was. It was pathetic. I thought I was having a heart attack at one point because my chest was so sore, and I was like, "Oh no, you just benched for the first time in five years. That's why you think you're having a heart attack." Yeah, I I also um, I went on Pittsburgh Sports Radio TV. Love those guys. Went on there this morning, and they were they were looking through the headlines of the combine, and the way they asked me, they're like, "So I see that Barstool Sports had a combine." And you're the winner of the combine. It felt like a big slap in the face to me, and also to Barstool Sports. But it ruled because I had like a. And a, also, you weren't a proud. Well, what you, you were. Oh yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. I had a proud Wait, friend. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, Hank I the hater I coming at me. Get your facts right, Hank. You're right, I had you're a right, proud right. friend. You moment. unathletic fuck. Last <laughs> night, PFT, because a scout came up to me and was like, "I saw your guys' combine." I was like, "What'd you think?" He's <laughs> like, uh, "I think you guys are in the right profession," and. He's like, I saw the beginning. Did Will end up winning? And I was like, no, PFD won. Nice. Because like, of the Wonderlick. Because the Wonderlick and the vertical leap, which was completely real. Um, there was a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can jump higher than Francis and Mark Titus. Well, the way that it works with the vertical leap is not how high you can touch Big Cat. It's right. how high no, your feet get off the I know. Ground. Yeah. I still think Titus probably can jump higher. I, listen, tapes, tapes say otherwise. I, I, <laughs> I touched rim last year, now, but I've gotten like I've lost so much athleticism. I just feel in my body in the last year. I don't know what's going on. I have no. I, uh, I never had explosive fast twitch muscles. I've always had slow twitch muscles, but they've gotten slower. Yeah, my fast twitch is very slow. I've also gotten to a point where I don't, I don't stretch before doing anything because stretching is just more time you could get injured. Yeah, well, you can't pull fat, right? That's facts. John Daly, is that John Daly? I think so. Yeah, maybe David Ortiz. I don't know. Or uh, what's Martello his name? Uh, Coach uh, Wiley, the guy uh, for the Browns. Yeah, could have been him. Bob yeah. Wiley. You, you didn't see the troops stretching before they stormed the beach at Normandy. It's fact. Um, all right, I have one other thing before we get to Hank's list. You might have something else too, PFT. The Tyree Kill lawsuit. Yeah, that's something. It is something. So Tyree Kill, uh, we'll say, better, fo- way better football player than guy. Mm-hmm. As good of a guy he is, much, much, much better at playing football. He's being sued, though, by a woman uh, who maybe broke her leg or hurt her leg. And um, the reason why this happened, allegedly, 
is it was a British social media influencer named Sophie Hall who put her son into Tyree Kill's uh, football camp. But before the football camp started, Tyree Kill invited her and her son over to his house and he was running drills. So it goes, Hall claims after she made her way to Hill's home, he asked her to participate in some football drills during a training session he was having in his backyard. Hill allegedly asked her to rush against him in a defensive line versus offensive line one-on-one style workout. According to Hall, she shoved the Super Bowl champion backward, which caused him to be embarrassed. Mr. Hill's attitude changed and became angry. Hall alleges Hill then flipped the drill around so he could rush against her. And after a couple reps, she said Hill charged into her violently and with great force, causing her to suffer a right leg injury. Um, this sounds like it's a football drill. It sounds like I would, if I was the... Uh, it's a football drill. What do you, uh, you get hurt in football drills? If I was the Buffalo Bills or if I was uh, any other team in that division, I would consider signing Sophie to yeah. shut Tyreek Hill down. It says, unfortunately, after getting humiliated in front of friends and family when he was knocked backwards during a friendly football lesson by his friend Sophie Hall, Tyreek became enraged and forcefully and purposefully shoved Miss Hall, severely fracturing her leg. But that's also, it was a football drill. Yeah. Sounds like she didn't get her feet moving. Yeah, maybe bad technique on yeah. her part. Yeah, I don't know. This is just, I mean, I Tyreek Hill getting sued for this is its quite something. Yeah, I, well, why do you think he invited her to his house? Was he like, I think your son's a good football player. I'd like to give him extra lessons probably, right? Let me uh, look let her me up and see, see. Let me see. See if she I looks like. I think I follow her on Instagram. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, he invited her for football. For football reasons, For football yeah. reasons only. Definitely. Whenever yeah. I see, this is probably uh, bad for me to admit, but when I see in, named in a lawsuit a party who's described first and foremost as being an influencer, that's always a red flag for me. Yeah, I would say so. But, influencer uh, yeah. Sophie Hall. She was like a nice woman. Let me see. Hold on. I want to see how nice I, I, her I had it, is. and then it's loading, yeah. Um, oh, actually, let me take this back. So she seems like a nice woman, but she also seems like she could play she could play nose tackle. Okay. Yeah. She's she's got some curves. She's she could play nose tackle. I'll put it this way, uh Bill Belichick would look at drafting her in the first round. I'm not surprised she was able to to blow up the line of scrimmage on Tyreek Hill. She's got a motor. Yes. It doesn't quit. Uh okay. Hank. Yes. You're number the Patriot two. number two. Yeah. You want me to just go into that? Who I saw last night, Hank? Who I told him, I was like, hey, Hank's dropping his top 10 Patriots. I don't know if you're on it. Vrabel? Nope. Think horses. Welker. Yeah, Wes Welker. And he was a little upset. I mean, I was like, we spent a whole weekend with We did spend a whole weekend together at the British Cup together. He He is a great guy. He did look jacked. Uh, They were showing him in one of the episodes. He he was ripped when he was playing for the Patriots. No rings though. I mean the the great great dude. What you know was starstruck when we got to hang out with him. That was like 2013, early Barstool days. I was I was geeking out. Oh yeah, you we spent the whole weekend with Wes Welker, and then in the last second, Hank was like, "Can I get a picture?" I was like, dude, we just hung with him. But then it was also the worst hang because uh, we went to yeah Breeders' Cup with him. And the next horse race he went to was a Kentucky Derby where he got busted for Molly. And I was like, I must be the biggest loser ever because he was like, he probably brought some Molly to the Breeders' Cup and was like, these guys suck. Yeah. He, maybe I'm not going to waste my Molly on them. Maybe he thought you were from Philly and knew not to offer you guys drugs. Yeah. But he was he was oh, part of those heavy. teams. They lost yeah. they lost the Giants. It was it was a it was a down era for the Patriots. A lot of narratives. A lot of people saying you know Brady's wash. Brady and Belichick tend to break up the team. They only won three Super Bowls. Disappointment. Yada yada yada. This player came in, changed everything. Just vibes wise, he he you know I think I was eighteen or nineteen when he when he signed with the team. So I was an eighteen nineteen year old. He was everything. Rob Gronkowski. Gronk spike, freak of nature, the most fun player, you know, non Tom Brady, but just every everything he did was fun. His attitude, you know, I've been lucky to to party him and his brothers. Like they're as fun as is advertised. Aaron Hernandez? No, it's Rob Gronkowski. Oh, because Aaron Hernandez is his brothers. Yeah, like, yeah, also he's, fun guys. He's fun. Yeah. Fun no, but the the, the whole the whole family is great, great people. Uh, 
unbelievable player, greatest tight end of all time. I think he might be the easiest player to root for if you're a fan of that team. Like Rob Gronkowski, it's impossible to not absolutely love the guy if you're a Patriots fan. And he is what he is. Like there's he's, no there's no shtick. There's no he's putting on an act. He's just he just loves football, life. Yeah. Beers, spike. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> that's how he probably that's that's gonna be his Hall of Fame speech. <laughs> yeah. He'll definitely try to he'll definitely try to spike something that will break the bust. The Hall of Fame. <laughs> he'll but he'll try to spike his own bust in the Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, yeah, Gronk was he was unguardable and also the funnest person in the world. Like I I I would agree with you putting him at number two. I think that's a good choice. I for, first night first night we all hung out together. We were with you know members of the oh, Gronkowski yeah. family. Mm -hmm. I've met a lot of them over the years, hung out with a bunch of times. Like I said, it's like they're they're as fun as advertised. Yeah. And like they, you know, they live the life that you think they live, Agreed. which is which is great. That's yeah. like it's it's fun to see. He was such a good player. It's it's it was it's Gronk. Honorable mention. Honorable mention, uh, because you know I'm still salty that they yada 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 2003 2004. He was only on the team for a short amount of time, but he was, you know. An unbelievable running back in 2004, Corey Dillon. Ooh. Oh, clock killing Corey Dillon. Yeah. 1,600 yards, dominated. Like he, you know, Patriots never really had a, a running back that was as, you know, superstar running back. He was kind of like Randy Moss before Randy Moss, too, where when they signed him, it was like, you know, trouble off the field yeah. and like he might not be a good fit for the team. Like they got him for nothing and then he just dominated that season. Yeah. And he was good 2005 uh, as well. So yeah, Corey the Dillon. era of big running backs. Yeah, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good job. But he wasn't hey, even in the documentary. Like were, it's crazy. And were, he was that was you know twenty one wins in a row. Yeah. He was the star running back, sixteen hundred yards. Doesn't even get a highlight in there. How crazy. Often do you think Wes Welker has somebody come up to him and is like, "Congrats on all those Super Bowls." Like they oh, think yeah. that he was he was on a Super Bowl champ. Probably a lot. I mean, it's pain. He he had you That's know tough. He had it. He had that drop. Like it 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 probably pains him. What do you think hurts Wes Welker more when someone says congrats on the Super Bowls or someone's like, hey, that catch you made against the Falcons was insane? Yeah, <laughs> probably that one. <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah. that one. Well, the and, and the clip, the the Wally Pip clip is so funny. Yeah. Like, like Belichick, he's like, uh, yeah, you know Wally Pip? He's like, just give it to him then. Yeah. Yeah. And he did. And, oh, he can have it. Yeah. 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 Damn. Uh, okay. And he do had we, it. Do we have anything else before we get to Schefter? I think we're good to go to Schefter. I Great interview with Schefter. Combine week, and then we'll we'll finish on the other side with uh, Firefest, which I think we have a couple stories from Combine week. Uh, PFT, you want to do an ad real quick before we get to Schefter? Yep, it is brought to you by Proper Number Twelve with St. Patrick's Day just around the corner. Proper Number Twelve is here to remind you: practice makes proper. Anything else just wouldn't be proper. St. Patty's Day is fast approaching, but you can celebrate St. Practice Day. With any proper 12, proper number 12, pour the roar. I like the Irish apple. The Irish apple is one of my favorite sipping whiskeys in the entire world. It's delicious. Take the bottle out, pass it around. It's almost St. Patrick's Day, but make it St. Practice Day to get ready. Pour the roar. Order your bottle of proper number 12 Irish whiskey with Drizzly today. And now here's Adam Schefter. Okay, we now welcome on one of our favorite interviews of the year. It is Adam Schefter at the Combine, our yearly check-in with Shefty. Uh, first of all, thanks for making this a tradition. We appreciate it. And my first question is a tough question. I, How, wouldn't, I wouldn't want it any other way than to start like that. Where's the Dez tape? No, uh, we'll get to that later. <laughs> how, how the how the fuck did you get the Punxsutawney Phil breaking news? Yeah. Like, are, are you? Is there a point where you're like, I've got enough? Because you did the NBA, you've obviously owned the NFL. And now you're doing little rats in in Western Pennsylvania, <laughs> seeing their shadows. Like you, enough is enough. You got to be like, I I don't need this beat, but you got it. You broke the news. Well, I appreciate that. That was probably the biggest story I've had this year. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> really proud of that one. It stands on its own. You and scooped El Nino. Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? I had some plants there in Pennsylvania that were <laughs> done and set up well in advance. The they knew. The importance of that story to our country. Yes. yes. We knew. They knew. And they knew that if they want that news dispensed on a big platform, they knew where to go with it. Yeah. yeah. And so somebody there was kind enough to keep me in mind, like anybody on any NFL story, shot me the news. And now we're waiting for spring to get here. And it, 
I, I don't think the message is hit Indianapolis yet. Yeah, no, yeah, it's pretty it's cool. definitely not. Definitely yeah. not. You know that Woj is going to have a guy in Punxsutawney next year. That's cool. You know, <laughs> I'm good with that. Woj, <laughs> I love Woj. Um, he's all over things. I love information. I love stories. Like, I love how much you love information. Wait, do you and, <laughs> do you really and Woj do. ever sit down and like, because it, it, it's very few people that you can relate to. The, the, let me say this. Yeah. Woj knows me. I would say, well, professionally speaking, better than my wife. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and it's not close. Whoa, you got! I didn't know you guys were an item. <laughs> Damn, we we, we can <laughs> understand exactly. Yeah, like he'll call me sometimes. Like God, I'm working on this trade. I'm waiting for this, waiting for that. And sometimes I can say, do this or do that. Or sometimes I'll just say, hey, you just got to wait now. And I know what he's feeling. I know what he's going through. Uh, I've been through the things that he's been through. He's been through the things I've been through. We go through them at various points of the year. And I love getting a text from Woj. will be like, God, I'm waiting on one right now. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that feeling. That fe- is that the best feeling and, and, right and, before? And, 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 and by the way, like, we also talk about the business, what it's like. Yeah. Talk about, you know, life at ESPN. Talk about, you know, how long can you do this? Ooh, mm-hmm. how yeah, long like, can you do this? As long as you can do it, as long as they'll have you. But have you, do you feel yourself slowing down at all? Have you have you had a moment in the last year where you're like old Shefty would have had that? No, that that's not how I feel. Okay, at all. I still feel I still love the information. Like I was going after the groundhog. Yeah, <laughs> I was going hard after him, <laughs> and nothing was going to stand in my way. Your fingers getting slower? Like no. Do you, at what age do you hit your prime as an insider? Mm. That's a great question. Yeah, Thank great you. question. Thank you. you know, I, I think it just changes. I think what happens over time is you care um, less about some of the smaller things and you recognize a lot of the noise that's just out there. And I don't really care about that noise. Like the other day when Peter King retired, he said something. I put that on my phone because I thought it was very interesting. When I broke the news to Big Cat. I thought he would cry. Mm-hmm. You, you thought he'd cry? Yeah. yeah. Really? Why is that? Uh, well, he's, he told me that Peter King died, so, <laughs> but he didn't, he, he didn't die fortunately, No, he, but he, he basically had enough, but he said something, he wrote one line in the column and I'm looking for it cause I, I wrote it down. I you see, wrote it down. That's yeah. plagiarism, Adam. You could copy and paste. Well, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's in my phone. I'm just looking for it right now. Hold on one second here. I think he's going to get us or something yeah. again. Yeah. Remember no, I'm, my, I'm on, I'm on high alert right on now. High alert. No. Yeah. You didn't bring any of your lackeys, although Stephen Shea could he be wrote, compromised. He wrote, the media's been conditioned to keep throwing logs in the fire day after day after day when absolutely nothing is happening. I'm thrilled to not contribute to that anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, it's true. When there's when you, when you have a, a lull or a dead period, there's the natural inclination to be like, well, something's got to happen. I got to report something. And I, I don't really care about that. Like, right. Yeah, he talked about he had no interest in the head coach hiring cycle. I couldn't be more interested. You're right. You know, free agency, couldn't be more interested. You know, we'll get past the draft, and there'll be throwing camps and conditioning camps and OTAs. That you're not. Interest level, not real high. Yeah, yep. so it's interesting because the last couple of years, I feel like when you're talking about throwing logs on a fire, the discussion has always, we're just like, let's talk about Dak again. Let's see, where, where, where are we at with Dak let's right now? Some Dak is, is Dura-Log. Is he yeah. elite? But I feel like... <laughs> that was a good line. That's good. But I feel, Dura-Elite is what we should call him because like we, we're always having that discussion, but I feel like this season is actually the time where it is interesting to talk about Dak and his contract and what the Cowboys are going to be doing with it. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to ask you, is Dak Prescott going to sign an, ex- an extension this year with the Dallas Cowboys, mm. or is he going to be a free agent? I think they have to get something done with him. I mean, he's got a $59.5 million cap number. They want to get a big deal done with C.D. Lamb. They want to get a big deal done with Micah Parsons. They want to upgrade their roster. Jerry Jones himself has said they're all in. Well, how can you be all in if your quarterback is taking up that much of the cap? Right. And, by the way, if you don't get it done with him, then after the season, you can't tag him. Right. Yeah. So he could just leave. Can right. Dak also say, like, I don't want to sign an extension? I, yeah, I want he to can, but agency? I think he's got too much love and respect for the organization, although there have been some mixed messages coming out of there. Yeah, from, from his camp, said, from his brother, right? yeah. Well, from both sides. And yeah. Even Jerry Jones, like, we're, like, was that a shot? We're only going to go as far as Dak takes us. Yeah. Well, so he, he didn't take it past the Packers in – 
the divisional round. Like, I don't know, it was kind of weird to me that yeah. he said that. So, in a way, I felt like Dak was being called out, and I don't know how that's going to impact the talks, but to me, they have to get something done with him. They have to. Yeah, mm-hmm. so so you mentioned something there, uh, the, co- the coaching uh, cycle that you're very interested yeah. in. Yeah. Why did Mike Vrabel and Bill Belichick not get jobs? Well, Mike Vrabel, I think, would have gotten the Chargers job if Jim Harbaugh had gotten onto the plane to go to Atlanta because I think Jim would have had a decent chance to get the Falcons, which obviously one move Dominoes, impacts yeah. another. Um, and I think Vrabel had a great interview with the Chargers, and they really liked him. And it just was one of those things. It just didn't go his way in this cycle. I think the fact that he's out there, the fact that Bill is out there, I think it speeds up the coaching firing cycle mm. next season when teams are ordinarily making moves. We get to Thanksgiving usually. Sometimes there's a move that's made early in the year. One stray firing. Oh, Carolina fired Frank Reich. But usually teams wait till after Thanksgiving and then they start trickling in. I, I think it wouldn't shock me if we started getting stuff like late October, early November because teams want to go talk to Vrabel. They want to go talk to Belichick. I mean, Pete Carroll's still out there. He should be in that conversation with the attitude he has. But Vrabel, I think, came close in Los Angeles. Belichick came close in Atlanta. At one point, people thought it was going to happen, and I think that there were just different factions and different groups, and some people wanted him, and then other people who didn't wound up prevailing. He doesn't get the Atlanta job. There were conversations with Washington at one Mm -hmm. point. It didn't happen. Washington was going to go in a different direction. They did talk to him. So it just didn't happen. And I think when you look at some of the openings, like I think these teams weren't looking for those kinds of guys this cycle. Right. But we'll get seven, eight, nine openings next year again. And I would think with the stature of these guys and their accomplishments, they'll be top of the list. And I, I think they'll be in play next year. Okay, one more coaching question, and yeah. this is going to hurt me. Did the Bears ever even reach out to Jim Harbaugh? I don't believe they did. God damn it. Mm. I, I don't what believe he was in play joke. there. And I, I think he was Chargers, Falcons. I sent him the video, too, of like the video I made. Like Sometimes you got to go back to move forward of him and Bears stuff. And what did it do? He said that was a great video. That's all he said. He said that's a very nice video. I don't talk about another man's job. Yeah, yeah, that hurts. Okay, okay. So Belichick and Vrabel, you would say if you had to guess right now, hundred percent they get a job. Next I would year? not. I would never say hundred percent, but I like both their chances. Okay, okay. So hundred percent. It wasn't because Vrabel is too big. <laughs> you don't think Vrabel is too physically intimidating? To be Ask a Diane coach? about that. Yeah, right? we, 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 we can have oh, yeah, Diane yeah, about the that. combine, right? Yeah. My idea is that there should be a Rooney rule for fat guys. Where yeah. every every offseason owners have to interview at least one fat head coach. Yeah, you know, like if, if Vrabel was too big, I'm surprised that I haven't been under consideration <laughs> for head coach job. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. I mean, PFT would fit right in. I, like dude, I'd, I'd be top of the list. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you together. see guys get fired in September for me. <laughs> yeah, five <laughs> seven five case. eight. Like we're ready to take five, on nine, the world. I'm yeah. five nine. Take on the head coach. If right. that's the qualification, all right, we can do it. If we're gonna come in guns blazing, I think you got shorter because I walked in this room and I was like, oh, hmm, I think I'm taller than maybe I grew. I might have grown over the last year, Chapter. You never know. Uh, uh, it's pot. Listen, I'm at the age where I start shrinking. Like my dad, when yeah. I stand next to him now, I notice like every time like, he was at eye level and now he's down to my chin. Like, I, it's weird. Be me. This is a really cute combo between the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we get it. Big Cat, you're, you, don't, you don't feel our pain. You no, just, I don't. You sit up there in your yeah. treetops and yeah. you're born on third base, act like you hit a triple because you hit the genetic lottery. Oh, man. Yeah. We get, this builds character if being it, shorter. Uh, men yeah. should be over six feet. I'll say it. And you know what? I'm going to blame my parents, right? <laughs> like short parents. And it was in a day and age where my parents, you know, my mom smoked cigarettes. My dad smoked like. They're smoking, drinking. They, they stunted uh-huh. you. <laughs> Absolutely. You could have been, 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 been a varsity athlete. I, I, I could have been, been dunking. I, I could have disqualified <laughs> myself for any of these NFL coaching openings that uh, I'm now in consideration uh, for. Chef, I got a question for you about um, about mock drafts. Because mock, the mock draft. See, that's another in, thing that I have no use for. So the mock draft industry is it's become a cottage industry. Stephen Shea is our um, what second ranked lieutenant. Yeah, uh, yeah mock he's drafter. been demoted. You you actually broke that news when he yeah. got his demotion. Yeah, um, but I and, I and it hurt me. Yeah, it hurt I, me to do. Yeah, that. it hurt all of us. Yeah, it was it was that some stories they cut to the bone. Right, uh-huh. that it, one did. It right. brings me no pleasure to report that I've demoted exactly. Stephen Shea. Yeah. Exactly. But if if you had to, if you were to put together like your the Adam Schefter mock top five with the information that you have, because you you swim in information. 
I think you could be like the best mock draft compiler of all time. Uh, there are some years where you feel like you can get a lot of the picks. And there are other years that something happens that just upsets the apple cart and kind of throws things into chaos. So I think there are some years that I would be fairly accurate and other years, like a lot of people, not as accurate. I just think that those exercises are so hard. That's why I don't put much credit. They're fun to look at. Like you could look at a mock draft over and over, Mm -hmm. Uh, like eating pizza. It's all good. Yeah. But some of them, again, if there's one trade and one guy goes, it just changes everything. Or if the Raiders reach like they do every year, it just changes everything. The fastest guy possible. But there have been times where, um, you know, there will be people that call you from teams. Hey, give me your top 15 picks. There were some years that were big. Mm -hmm. Uh, Other years, not as big. So this year, Caleb Williams is a bear. Can we announce that right now? Go ahead. Okay. I'm not going to stop you. Caleb Williams is a bear. Where is Justin Fields going to go? That's... That's really? the question. I'm sure you're working on it right now because it, right it does feel like they're going to make the trade before maybe free agency. Well, it was, in, it was amazing. Yeah, Ryan Poles couldn't have been more transparent about that. Like, we want to get this done before free agency begins. What's interesting to me is that there are going to be moves that are made, right? Like, Kirk Cousins is a free agent. Does he go back to Minnesota? And what if he doesn't? Baker Mayfield's a free agent. Does he go back to Tampa or does he not? Like, these moves impact others. So then... If one of these teams happened to lose a quarterback, would they then be more apt to go trade for Justin Fields? But the Bears want to get it wrapped up as a courtesy to Justin Justin Fields. Justin Fields, yeah. Yeah. Which And, again, what if they don't get the compensation Hmm. that they want? What is the compensation? Well. What are you hearing? Well, I think it's pretty simple. Ryan Poles, the Bears general manager, worked in Kansas City at the time that they traded for Alex Smith. They traded two twos to the 49ers for Alex Smith. Sam Darnold, to me, when you talk to people, might be the most relevant compensation comparison. The Jets traded him to the Panthers in 21, I believe it was, and it was for a a six that year and a four and a two the next year. So three picks, a two, four, and six. And I think that the Justin Fields compensation is somewhere between what Alex Smith got and what Sam Darnold brought. So, like a second and a, a two and a five, a two yeah. and a four. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A two I can and deal a three. With that. Something like that. But yeah. here's the problem or the issue. Like, who's the team that's doing it? Right. 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 Like, Atlanta might have some interest, might not. I think it's got some interest in some other quarterbacks, too. Is Pittsburgh going to do that when they still want to give Mitchell Trubisky a chance? Or they're going to give up Kenny Pickett, you mean? Kenny Pickett. Yeah. Yeah, Kenny Pickett. Mitch Trubisky mm-hmm. moved up front. I think he's out of chances. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Are they going to give up the compensation? And then is there another – like who else outside Atlanta and Pittsburgh do you think would be main players for Justin Fields? Mm. Maybe Denver? No. Ooh. No? No. Nope. Russ they, is gone, What right? are they going to do with Russ? Yeah. I think they move on from Russ. I mean, Sean Payne, you just read between the lines. Right. Yeah. You, you I don't even have to read between the lines. I think well, it's just saying Sean it. Payne's lines are like he holds up three fingers in a straight line and then he takes the first two down. <laughs> yeah. Read between, <laughs> between those lines. He's gone. <laughs> Well, he, he had that good line about he saw the meme out there yeah, with the, the Broncos family of Jersey and all yeah. the quarterbacks. We got to make sure we don't get the next one. Like he talked about the next one. Yeah. You know, you know you're already talking about the next quarterback. Yeah. Well, you still got a quarterback. So, yeah. so, but you don't think that the Broncos are in the Justin Fields market? I don't. I So it's a limited amount of teams. Again, what other teams? We're, 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 we're brainstorming here. Okay. We're trying to help your franchise yeah. here, Big Cat, right? Yeah. What other teams could we think of? Mm. That conceivably... Patriots, although they have a top three pick. Yeah, yep. Washington, mm. not going to do that. That would that. be interesting. That would be, that would be very interesting. Is that, wow. is that a real thing, or is that just no. you trying to no, yeah, just, stir the pot a little bit? Some bit. Some we're, we're, no, we're, no, we're, we're just doing okay. a thought exercise exactly. here. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're trying to help out the Bears yeah, yeah. Okay. to see what other teams could conceivably step up for Justin Fields. And so, by the way, what if the Steelers aren't willing to trade that, and what if the Falcons aren't willing to Then what are you doing? We're fucked. Well... Now you got to wait for free agency yeah, yeah, and yeah. to see some of the other movements. Yeah. So that to me, like we go into every off season and there's always a big question. And I, I can't think going into this off season, what's any more interesting than the bears at one. We assume they will take Caleb Williams if everything goes well. And then you would assume they move on from Justin Fields and where he goes. Yeah. So it's two quarterbacks. 
two teams. We'll we'll see how it shakes out. Yeah. The Las Vegas Raiders would they be in the market? Ooh, interesting. It is interesting. Uh, anything's possible. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard them. Mm-hmm. But that's my point. Whether it's the Raiders or some other team, like what about the Seahawks? They keep being non-committal on Justin Field on uh, Geno Smith. Smith. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't think they're a team, but there's going to be a team. There are with most of these situations that all of a sudden just pops in that you weren't expecting that team mm-hmm. to be in play for this player. Yeah, and I don't. Maybe it's the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think, like, who... So I guess it's not the Cardinals, right? Because the Cardinals put out that really strange tweet the other day that just said, like, here's our franchise quarterback. Yeah, It seems like that... You don't just fire that tweet off if you have a franchise quarterback, right? You have to... That's them letting him know, like, hey, maybe they just tried to do a trade. It didn't work out, but we're committed to you now. What did you just get? What did you just see on your phone? phone? (laughs) Just just a little text popping in, just making sure that uh, Justin Fields isn't traded while we're doing this conversation, right? Okay. Read the text. Who texted you? <laughs> Tell us who texted you. Uh, NFC or AFC? <laughs> Neither right now. It's uh, oh yeah, interesting. Neither. Goodell. Mm. Warmer. Oh <laughs> oh, there we go. Troy oh. Vincent. <laughs> oh. Uh, so but but the Cardinals are firmly in on Kyler. Was there any talk at all about Kyler Murray's future with that organization? I, I think it was them like just announcing to the world because there had been so much speculation about them moving on from Kyler, them getting a top pick, them being in play for Caleb Williams, even though they turned out to be a little bit better than that and played themselves out of the number one pick. People wondering about Kyler's future. There were all these discussions, all this conversation, and I think it was just them planting a flag and saying, this is our franchise. We got our franchise quarterback. I I thought it was like if a, a husband or a boyfriend comes home and they just have flowers for no reason. The wife's like, wait, yeah, wait a second. Yeah, what'd you do wait. wrong? <laughs> like, that tweet just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Kyler's probably like, huh? Yeah. Right, there was no need yeah, right. to announce anything. That's what we exactly. thought, but yeah. okay. Yeah, so maybe, maybe they were meeting with the Bears privately about mm. Justin Fields, mm. and before anybody could Word report got that, while <laughs> other reporters were distracted with Punxsutawney Phil, yeah. Yeah. they figured we should just <laughs> plant our flag and say, here's our franchise quarterback. Yeah. You know what you should do? The last hill for you to climb as a reporter, you should just you should announce the election this year. Mm. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, RFK Jr. If Steve Kornacki could come into our world, then why can't we go into his world? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the the numbers freak on right? uh, on Sunday Night Football. Yeah, it looks like Roan. I think Tuesday night in November. I think you have to. That's the only way Stephen Che will find out who's the next president. That, Scoop him <laughs> You might have to text him personally because <laughs> he doesn't get any news. It's not Schefter news. Yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> that's a fact. We we got to report precincts before yeah, listen, anybody yeah, else does. He, he didn't find out curve. about Ukraine and Russia for like three months because he's like, who? <laughs> Schefter hasn't talked about it. Yeah, who, so. who's the ghost of Kiev? <laughs> I haven't heard. I don't. My notifications didn't send anything. To um, me. How pumped were you when you broke the Aaron Rodgers news live on air? Was that was that a highlight of the last year? Because you got the reactions. Yeah. I think it was Mina. Well, Kimes the, 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 the and, funny thing was the reactions. It became this permanent like little picture that's taken, like all these, yeah, you know, facial facial reactions. And I I got in the text on the compensation on air. So when I said that it included the Jets one, that's when everybody went nuts. I'm like, hold on, hold on, because I didn't have time to process it the way I should have. Right. Like I didn't deliver it the right way. Right. I should have said, okay, here's the deal, the Jets are getting Rodgers and this, but they're giving up that. But it's happening in live TV. That's yeah. live TV mm-hmm. for you. So as soon as I said the Jets won, that's when, you know, Mina Kimes, you know, you would have thought that, you know. Yeah. It's the, crazy. Yeah. And, so uh, so what what's up with Rodgers? Is he is he going to be fully healthy? I mean, the, the whole Achilles thing, like him saying he was going to be back, I actually think he did the Jets a disservice because they never yeah. thought about something else. Because they're like, well, maybe he'll be back, strung him along a little bit, and had Zach Wilson play the rest of the year. Well, the, the plan was to have Zach Wilson in bubble wrap. Like, right. Like, not have to play at all and let him grow and learn. And if you remember back, remember, uh, remember back to Hard Knocks, how Zach Wilson reacted around Aaron Rodgers, right? He was soaking up everything that he was saying. It's unfortunate for him that he got thrown into the fire again because that was not the plan. So it would have been great if they had a quarterback like a Gardner Minshew that they could have turned to when Rodgers went. They didn't plan for that. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember being at that game that night, and I uh, had this conversation. Where did I see him? Christopher Johnson, the Jets owner. We do the pregame show for Monday Night Football. We're on the field. Aaron Rodgers runs out with the flag. 
it was oof, a lot of adrenaline, a lot of emotion. Couldn't wait to see what was going to happen. Go back into the truck, and Rogers goes down. And you knew it was not your run-of-the-mill injury. So I'm like, okay. I was supposed to go home uh, at the end of the first quarter, get out of there. And um, I stayed behind. I went outside the Jets' locker room. I remember seeing Christopher Johnson walk in. I'm like, what's the deal? He goes, I don't know. I don't know. Where did I see him recently? It had to be, where would I have seen him? He, I said, you knew when you passed me, right? He said, oh, yeah, I was with Aaron the entire time. Oh. Hmm. You know, and everybody was just so devastated by that night and the circumstances surrounding it. Um, and the team never recovered from it. I remember I stayed around to do the postgame show and Scott Van Pelt show. And I remember Jet fans, like, they were, they were happy they won the game. And over. I'm like, why yeah, are you happy? Over. Yeah. Like it's it's that's exact it's over. Yeah. Like it just it's it doesn't matter that they won. I, I don't think people grasp the magnitude of it immediately. Yeah, of how it much does, they built around Aaron Rodgers and how he was the yeah, least. And and season. I thought maybe they were in denial that maybe okay, it wasn't gonna be a ruptured Achilles, which it was. Um so yeah, it was a night that changed the season for the Jets and the Jets luck. Yeah. And then with the back and forth that they had with, with Wilson, Tim Boyle. You remember they put in Tim Boyle for a spark this year? Trevor uh, Simeon. Trevor Simeon. Who was – was it was it Salah making all those decisions or was that coming from upstairs? Oh, I don't think no, that's coming from upstairs. I mean, he's the coach of the team. I think he probably decides on the quarterback. You'd have to think that. No, I don't think anybody's telling him who to play. I think he's doing what's best for the team. Again, I, I come back to the fact that it's unfortunate that they had to put Zach out there. Yeah. Because I don't think that was the plan. And and I still think that guy's got talent. But with that position, it's got to be harnessed and harvested the right way or these guys wind up crashing and burning before they have a chance to become quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to him this year. And now he's going to get traded somewhere else or sign on somewhere else. And we'll see if he could develop into the kind of guy that they thought he was when they drafted him. Was it two overall? Are, so, based off the Aaron Rodgers thing, we're big grass guys. We we support grass. Is the league going to actually – Smoking it or playing on smoking it? Smoking it and kinds. playing on it. Uh, <laughs> is the league hearing the, the, like, the players well, you know, when they say, hey, we don't want to play on this turf anymore? Do they, do, is there anything that's going to happen that they're maybe taking steps to be like, yeah, we should get back to playing on grass more often than not? That has been out there for how long? We, players have always wanted to play on grass. Right. But it feels like it's gaining a little bit more traction. Does it? With the, yeah, with the well, Jets injuries, with some of the like, the, like concussion the, stuff. MetLife Stadium, and I, I, they won't like it, but I mean, there have been some bad, bad injuries. injuries on that field. Yes, there just have been. It, that field makes me nervous. Yeah. yeah. So, what, but but it does feel like a little bit more momentum. Is the league just like we don't care? We're playing on what we play. Well, on? they're playing the World Cup, right? And yeah, they're they're putting in grass for that. So, so like it can it. be done, right? Yeah. So th that's what I'm saying. Like, is the league at least hearing this, or is it? Nah, we don't care. I because I, it is always that that weird thing where the league will talk about player safety, but then when it comes to action, it can sometimes be very different. Well, I haven't heard a conversation about going away from field turf fields in general, but to me, it should be pretty simple that if they're going to put grass in that stadium for the World Cup game. Just leave the grass. Yeah, leave it just there. Just leave it there. And I don't yeah. care if it's dying out in the winter. I don't care if they got to paint it the way they did in Cleveland, paint the grass green. Like, whatever you got. It's, to me, preferable to play on that rather than the other stuff that yeah. has led to some unfortunate injuries. Yeah, yeah. The, the Bengals, and I think the, the Vikings maybe, they had the split turf field, and they got away from that. So there's no more of the split turf anymore so they're We're i think some experts. some teams are, are trying yeah we know everything about the grass. clearly did we yeah. ever get a conclusion to Sodgate in the super bowl two years ago uh they replaced the turf it sounded like like the week or two before sort of like the 49ers practice facility. Yeah. yeah the sod father at it again yeah 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 that two was, sod I mean, controversies cost the eagles a super bowl both involving the chiefs interesting mm. Mm. interesting <laughs> how <laughs> scripted was the nfl this year for taylor swift to be at the super bowl and to be hugging and smooching rubbing travis kelsey's belly yeah it, it was a hell of a script i mean i read it in the preseason yeah and i couldn't believe the twists and turns that it was going to take yeah you they, knew they, though you knew the second they they got together it's like okay chiefs this super bowl. is where it's going that's are the, easy are the chiefs bad for football a good question. Thank you. Are, were the Patriots bad for football? Some may they're, say they're bad for every other team. Yeah, you know, I. That's the next. That's the next conversation. Once once a team establishes a dynasty, we then naturally have to go yeah. with: Are they bad for football? 
to me, when you get to watch a guy like Patrick Mahomes, who's in the prime of his career or entering the prime of his career, he might not even be there yet, that's great. I mean, yeah. you, you get one of these all-time players. I don't know when that's ever bad. Now, it's bad for the rest of the league. Like, I would not want to be a coach in the AFC West. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Jim Harbaugh, Sean Payton, they took those jobs. You take those jobs at your own peril. Yeah. Because you got to face that guy for the next dozen years. Like, that's brutal. That is good luck unseating him. And all the quarterbacks in the AFC, I mean, you, there was an opportunity this year for somebody to take this step forward. Like, can you imagine, can you imagine betting the Ravens at the beginning of the season uh, to win the Super Bowl? Well, mm-hmm. Fuck you. Fuck and then you. not hedging that. Fuck bet. you. Like, no. Fuck you. I'm With Patrick Mahomes. Fuck you. Like fuck the best you. quarterback you know way too play. much, Schefter. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> it would never be me. There was an opportunity for <laughs> Lamar Jackson and the Ravens well, just, that, that, they, was going, that they literally mother- didn't <laughs> cash in on. Well, they Schefter, didn't cash so how short and Big are you? Cat didn't cash. Five, six? Imagine, Schefter, if, if, if somebody did that also with the Bills at the same time. Listen, I bet yeah. on the Chiefs in the Super Bowl and I made it all right. Yeah. Could you and, imagine betting uh, on Brock Purdy against Patrick Mahomes? Can you imagine right, can doing on. it? We can you imagine on. back-to-back <laughs> years doing the Eagles one yeah, year and then the yeah, Ravens the next? Yeah, but yeah. Can you imagine <laughs> Again, that? I bet the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, unlike some people in this Wow. Team. We Wait, hold on. on. Listen, uh, this is. Can you imagine we're not, doing We're not the supposed Eagles? to talk about gambling. The NFL is above gambling. Yeah. We should move on from this line oh, of question. Man. Can you imagine Why'd doing you the Eagles? Do that? Not hedging and then not hedging again the next year. Oh, no, I, I can't. can't. So much money I can't on even imagine that. I can't, yeah. imagine that. I can't imagine it at all. I can't imagine it at all. Can we talk about the Bills, though? Can we talk about Josh? Josh yeah. Allen and the Bills? Um, I feel like they're good enough. They should yep. be good enough to, to compete and win a Super Bowl for whatever reason. Just keeps not happening to them. I think that reason has a lot to do with Patrick Mahomes, obviously. Um, how much Was there any conversation in Buffalo after the season was over about making any drastic changes at all? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, to me, they're entering the offseason. They're, they're close. They're close. And, again, they had the chance this year. You got the Chiefs in Buffalo. That's what makes it so hard for them, uh, that the opportunity was right there for them. It was right there for all these teams. Like, Joe Burrow's out. You know, the Chiefs were down for a little while. The Bills were at home. And none of these teams took advantage of it, much to your Yeah, Ravens at home. You know, it's true. It's, I mean, Patrick Mahomes Like, you're not going to get that many chances. Correct. The window was there, especially going into the season when we talked about Aaron Rodgers and Justin Herbert and, and Joe Burrow and all these guys. And it's like, you get three of those guys have massive injuries and... It's still Patrick Mahomes. I think if you're the Bills, honestly, you just got to keep knocking on the door and hope that one of those years, like, just ask all the people that played against Michael Jordan what it was like every year that they didn't get to win the NBA championship, whether it was who played in the East that no Patrick Ewing. Yeah, the Knicks. The Knicks. Yeah. yeah. It comes right to mind. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's York. it's the we've we've said it, Patrick Mahomes. The 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 part where he's become the new Patriots is that he is going to steal Super Bowls from some all-time quarterbacks that they're Philip Rivers or like even thinking Peyton Manning probably would have had more than just two Absolutely. and all these guys who are great great quarterbacks and they their their resume just isn't the same because they had Tom Brady in their era. He's going to change legacies of yeah. other mm-hmm. quarterbacks and other franchises because he's going to be that good and win that many Super Bowls he already has. Yeah. And it's not like he's going away. Right. He's just going to keep doing that kind of thing. He's so good. He's he's a uh, he's stealing joy from all these other cities too. Like, yeah. imagine how much better life in Buffalo would be right now be if Patrick better. Mahomes was not. Imagine better. how much better life would be in Baltimore and Chicago right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 we don't have to do that. <laughs> they didn't draft. We've him. already put that to bed. All right, so here's another team that's yeah. got the the joy stealing from stolen from them, the San Francisco 49ers. Where are they at a crossroads, or is it because? They have been so good yeah. for this five year stretch where, you know, two two soup going to two Super Bowls, another NFC championship or two another two NFC championship games. They've been right on the cusp. What is it like? Is it I don't think it's Brock Purdy, but is there a question? Is it do they You know what's amazing? Upgrade? They have their garden, Spencer Burford, in the overtime, and he goes the wrong way. Yeah. On the block. Goes the wrong way. And I should have called the timeout. And he also had Kittle not on the field. On that play where Spencer Burford went the wrong way, Brandon Ayuk was the primary option, and the guy covering Brandon Ayuk fell. He fell. Brandon Ayuk is wide open for a touchdown. Jawan Jennings is open for a touchdown. Brock Purdy doesn't have the time because the other lineman came in. 
And that's how close. That's the margin. Like if he Jake just goes. Moody, to, extra point. That, that, that's, and I flew out here to Indy with this guy. I was saying to some of your coworkers here. I sat next to this guy named Simon who works for, uh, I'm drawing a, blank and, uh, drawing a blank on the name of the company, Track. What's the company that tracks the golf balls? Track, trackman? Track, trackman? Trackman. Golf Zone. No, it's not golf. It's Trackman. Golf Zone's better, though. Trackman? This guy works for Trackman. Mm-hmm. He tracks NFL kicks. We were talking about that. And he went into the, there are certain teams that employ him. And he scouts kicks and what they're doing. And what a horrible existence. Uh, well, hold <laughs> Just on. Just watching kicks he, he, over and over. He, he tried out for the Dallas Cowboys a couple of years ago. He kicked in college, small college. Simon, I forget his last name. Anyway, he calls up the dad on Jake Moody. And he goes through like all his extra points. And he's like, ideally, you want to be above 10 feet on all your extra points. And he showed a few of them where he was at like 9, 7. Most of them were above 12 feet. And these teams hire this guy as a consultant to say to the kicker, hey, you need a little bit more trajectory on your extra point, which you ordinarily would think, well, what's the value in that? Right, mm-hmm. right. Well, the value in it may have been a world title. Right, right. Yep. It's right. Crazy. So son, this is the best sales pitch I could ever give to Simon, yeah. who I met on my plane yeah. flying out of here from track, man. But he he had all the data on Jake Moon. I said, the 49ers, are you, weren't they one of the teams you work for? He said, no. Oh. Mm. Brutal. He was all, he was a little shaky all season. Yeah, too. he was. Yeah. But you know, people forget he did make two over fifty. He did. And, and like, he, he hit some big kicks in college for Michigan. He was he was a great kicker, and they took him high. And he was inconsistent this year, but he was great in the Super Bowl. Other than he the set the record, he, he held the all time record for longest Briefly. field goal for about like ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I I also noticed you haven't apologized for Michigan cheating. Yeah. No, I have not, and I will not. Oh, okay. I, I like that. that. I respect that. Are you a little upset that Jim Harbaugh is gone? Because it does feel like that was an incredible run that he's ha- he's been on, beating Ohio State three years in a row, national title. Maybe you're going back to back to the pack. Well, let me say this. I'm a big Sharon Moore fan. Okay. I love that guy. I think he's going to be great. And I don't view it like that. Like, to me, I look at, like, next man up, Sharon Moore deserves this. He's worked for this. The program, I think Jim has left it in a spot where I think – you know, you get a ton of sanctions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I think that they'll be still very strong. Um, and Jim wanted to go to the NFL. Yeah. He wanted to go to the NFL. For, he was going to go at some point. Yeah, in no, time. he went at the perfect time. And th- there are more and more college coaches that seem to want to go to the NFL. Like he was going. Yeah. I, I had this argument with my friends. I'm like, they're like, he's he's going to stay. And uh, in fact, I remember that day. <laughs> it's very funny. I'm on a group text chain with my college buddies. And one of my college buddies text me that is son just saw something that Jim Harbaugh is debating a new extension from Michigan and and I was waiting at that moment for the call that it was done mm-hmm. with the charters and my heart's like pounding as I'm waiting for this call and I like stop and like whoa whoa, whoa. maybe he could stop yeah just stop okay yeah. he's not going back I know let, let just and I said stay tuned and within another hour the deal got done with the Chargers. He was in L.A. He wasn't going back to Ann Arbor. And obviously the son of one of my college roommates, I, I would hope that they would turn to me more than they would turn to him for yes, uh-huh. message Jim's future. Yes, yes. yes. Um, did you cry when Michigan beat Ohio State, when Sharon Moore cried? No. <laughs> that was Penn State. <laughs> oh, it was Penn State. Penn State. Yeah, yeah, Penn State. State. He might have cried Ohio State, and that, was, and that was the first game of his suspension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. cry when you were like, they did it, they did it for no, Coach? No, 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 no. Yeah, that – you know, listen, I, I'm good with all that, all the emotion. Uh, I don't love the F word on national TV. Oh, no. it, you don't no, like fuck it, on it, national it, TV? It, why not? You look prude. <laughs> Wait, what about, okay, t- talk about crying. Honestly, do any of these uh, teams scouting here in the combine for Indy, do they care that Caleb Williams cried? Because I think they might. No, hold, hold on. Let's say there are 31 teams that do care. I know. The Bears Does it do. matter? Yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> I know, matter? I know, I know, but... Like, do you think that that actually matters at all in terms of, like, NFL teams? No. Okay. I do think you? It does a, I think it a little bit. By the bit. way, if he's your quarterback, do you care? No, I don't care. I'm be like, that's. Great. I'll start crying whenever he wants me to. I'll cry on command. I'm just saying I still think there's a little bit, there's at least one guy in every room who's like, hey, he cried. Yeah. What's up with that? Okay. 
you know, he's in touch with his feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be the Bears quarterback in all probability. I love that he cried. And then yeah. every other Shows team, cares. every other team will be like, that guy cried. He's a loser after they don't get him. Yeah. That's how it works. That's it's exactly. Like, how it becomes works. a negative if you, if you don't well, get the guy. You know, the funny thing is maybe it becomes like one of those things during the draft process that comes out and it's like some team driving the narrative like, yeah, Caleb Williams, crybaby. Oh, we're in, uh -huh. we're in full Caleb Williams bashing mode because that's all that's left. Like, there's nothing when you get to when you when you get to a point in the combine draft cycle where it's like, here's what the number one pick is. Yeah, well, it's just gonna all be negative. I had Drake May on my podcast last week. I said to him, the next two months, get ready for no reason. Yep, for your stock to go up one day and your stock to go down yep. the next. Pick you apart, and 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 it sucks. It'll come out. Drake May, you know, can't throw on the run or mm. with that whatever it is the s2 cognition test yeah there you go i mean well are those guys still in business they gotta be right you know there the, the thing is is that there are a lot of teams that would turn to that company and they would lean on that inform information it would kind of supplement all the other work and that that's what it would do but there was teams that i think put some credence into it and, Interesting and uh, woo, yeah. Not, could not, could it ever have been more wrong on one guy yeah. ever? Counterpoint: Bryce Young ordered the scallops when we went to dinner with uh, with the owner of the Panthers with Tepper. Yeah, so that's why Tepper liked him. Bryce so Young kind of outweighs. Bryce it. Young tested off the charts, off the charts, mm -hmm. off the charts, and yeah, I mean that's that's hard if you're the Panthers and you made that trade, and um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bad and it's bad. Make, it makes, I, I like to tease the owner. You know, I do too. His wife was a big CJ Stroud person. Oh, okay. is she really? She liked she likes CJ Stroud. Okay, she's we, a big Ernest and Julio Gallup <laughs> fan too. I, so I got I got me. a couple more questions because uh, Stephen Che yeah. has some questions too. Yeah. Real quick, you mentioned your podcast. Know it from Adam. No, that would change the name a long time. Yeah, ago. that was the worst podcast <laughs> name of all time. <laughs> I agree. Actually, it's something you and Che have in common. Che once had a show called well, maybe, Surf and Wait, Turf. hold on. Is it still called he that? Had a, he had a show called Surf and Turf that was a football podcast. Yeah? Surf and Turf. Surf and Turf for a podcast? For a football podcast. Why was he called Surf and Turf? There's no reason. Because he... Talking the mic, you have we, a mic. We, we, we changed it to the Adam Schefter podcast. Okay, that makes more better. sense. Surf and Turf Who's was on the, name of the Plain podcast. and simple. Who's on the Adam Schefter podcast? You guys, I need to get you guys on there. Yeah, well, yeah. no, I'm a, I'm a know it from Adam guy. That's <laughs> what you were on that show. That show rocked. <laughs> yeah, that show rocked. Right. My, other, my other question is, do you, Stephen brought this up on the way down. Do you, I think we've talked about this, but do you miss driving at all? Because you don't, you, you're not allowed to drive. I drive, I drive. I thought ESPN banned you from driving. <laughs> they took away your license. You no, know, I drive. You know, you know who would like to ban me from driving? My wife and my daughter, because I'll be in the car, I'll get a text and... You, you want to see arguments. You want to see somebody get pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you stop that? You but know? you do have a driver for the most part because no, of the, no, you I got don't. the news. No, I no. I, I, when I would be going to Bristol, okay, I'd have the driver to go yep. to Bristol. But I don't go to Bristol all that much during the season. It's Sunday morning. Um, so, no, I, I drive. Okay. I drive. Right, you drive. I drive myself right, everywhere. Well, Although, at certain times of the year, it's probably best off to have somebody drive you. And I look forward to my daughter not yeah. more than she does getting her license. So she could be your driver. She could be the driver. Yeah. 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 Um, I, got, I got one thing about the commanders real quick, then we'll let Che ask some questions. First of all, I would like for you to get on board with the rebrand of that, that coach's graphic that you always like to put out. Of <laughs> to, to include Raheem Morris LaFleur. in the future, right? Yeah, yeah. So what, what we need to do with that, we need to include Raheem Morris on it. We need to include Dan Quinn on it yeah. and rebrand it as, look at all these ex-Falcons head co or Falcons <laughs> coaches that are now head coaches somewhere else in the league. That way it's not the 2013 Redskins anymore. Can we I, do that? Done. It's the Falcons coaching staff that, that, that's now that, being spread out. That graphic of all those it's, – it's by now, it's like – it's almost cliched, right? It's yes. like – did you know that it feels personal? You know, well, you know, it's like Matthew Stafford and uh, uh, Clayton yeah, Crenshaw went to yeah. the same yeah. high school. Yeah, yeah. Like, we we know the coaches by yeah. now. We know. We we've heard it time and time again. Yeah. Just when that comes across your desk, make sure that those are Falcons coaches that are now elsewhere in the league, not Redskins coaches. <laughs> yes. So Kyle Shanahan, Dan Quinn, Raheem Martin, Raheem Marsh back in Atlanta. Yeah. Lafleur, uh, Mike McDaniel. Yeah, you're right. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll rebrand it. For yeah, thank Falcons. you. I appreciate that. that. And and then uh, my other question: What are the Commanders going to do at number two? They go quarterback. The question is, do they do Jaden Daniels or Drake May? Um, new people. Don't know what they're thinking yet. Mm -hmm. I need a little bit of time before I give you that answer. Okay. Like, okay. I, I don't mean to ride the fence on you, but these guys, 
haven't had their pro days yet. They haven't had their 30 visits yet. They haven't taken the S. S two. Yeah, S2. I put a lot of stock in that one. S two test. You know, I think the Texans leaked the S two thing a so purpose. the Panthers wouldn't draft. Straight. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing is, what if the Houston Texans had the number one overall pick? Mm-hmm. What would they have done? They would get a shitload of picks for it. No, they would have gotten C.J. Stroud. I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh, you mean, you mean yeah, last, last year? year. Last yeah. year, if they had the yeah. number one pick, huh. and they had their choice. Yeah, it worked out. Uh, the, Bryce win, Young Lovey and Smith C.J. winning Stroud. that last game with Davis Mills going to two. Mm-hmm. Uh, works out for a reason. Right. Right. Everybody, everybody, everybody was all over Lovey Smith. I know. Mm-hmm. Right? I know. And it was the greatest thing that he ever could have done for the Texans organization. He set mm-hmm. them up. They won the game. They fell back in the draft. And they wound up getting CJ. That's what you never know. It's true. All right. So, rowback question RHOBACK.com, promo code TAKE. 20% off your first purchase. QZS, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. Go to rowback.com right now. Use uh, promo code TAKE. You get 20% off. Rowback question is going to be given to Stephen Che. So, Stephen Che is a Schefter. I think he's your number one fan. I think he's your number one fan. Um, (laughs) Che, (laughs) would you like to ask some questions? Absolutely. Yes. Um, so it's very cool to get all these like nuggets of <laughs> things nuggets. that very cool. you have more Intel about the NFL than probably any living person, especially like behind the scenes stuff. So is this a question or you're just sucking them off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm freezing. Keep going. Are you? <laughs> Jay Glazer. So what is, uh, maybe a piece of news that never came to light that would be the ultimate butterfly effect moment for Des right Bryant now. tape. Mm. Butterfly effect. Des Bryant tape. Mean? Like if this one small thing had happened like that, you know, throwing yeah. Brandon Ayuk, the NFL landscape would be totally different right now. Because it well, could be if the Texans Des, had the te- that, yeah. that's a perfect example, mm-hmm. right? If the Texans had lost that game and gotten the number one pick yeah. in that yeah. draft, if that had happened. I think they might have taken Bryce Young. Yeah. And I don't know if they would have traded the pick, which means Chicago wouldn't have Caleb Williams, which means they wouldn't be shopping Justin Fields this year. So That's a big one. There are a whole host of them. I got more for you. Um, here's a great one that pertains to the Super Bowl this year that we talked about a little bit on Sunday Countdown, but I didn't deliver it the right way. Um Seems the, like a lot of that's going around with you, Schefter. Yeah. Seems like old Schefter would have delivered yeah, it the yeah, right yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. The draft where the 49ers <laughs> in 2017 had the second overall pick initially. Patrick Mahomes was in that draft. Okay. They mm-hmm. didn't, this is, they didn't this even do, over. They didn't do any work on him. Yeah. They didn't do any work on him because they thought the following offseason, Kirk Cousins was leaving Washington. Oh, oh okay. Hold on, hold on. This gets better and better. So Kirk Cousins is leaving Washington. They thought that he would want to be there. They would want him there. And it's a layup. So there's no reason to do any real work on the quarterbacks in the 2017 draft. So why do you need to work on Patrick Mahomes with Deshaun Watson when you know you're going to get Kirk Cousins? Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is New England calls up San Francisco that Halloween. It's like, hey, we got to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. Just give us a two. Really? Really? Well, they do that. So that blows up the Kirk Cousins plan. But back to that draft in 2017, the only quarterback that they did extensive work on that they wound up trading up for, in the third round, they moved up to take C.J. Beathard. Mm. And when C.J. Beathard left after four years and signed with Jacksonville, the 49ers got a compensatory seventh-round draft pick. Oh. And with that compensatory seventh-round draft pick that they got from the draft in which they bypassed Patrick Mahomes, they took Brock Purdy. Who That's is such better a be- than Patrick wow. Mahomes. That's such a beautiful story. That is a great <laughs> that story. Awesome. That's a great yeah. answer. That is Damn. Awesome. Um, another question I have, just because you are in such the you have to be on your P's and Q's, you because you word all your own tweets, right? Yeah. You do. Wow. How do you feel about that? <laughs> That's super impressive. Man. <laughs> well, oh, I, mean, I also, every word that comes out of my mouth, oh, I say. Yeah. By the way, speaking well, of which, yeah. what what happened with the uh, Chiefs versus Commanders in the Super Bowl? Well, oh, I, yeah. Oh, I, th- I thought for a second I oh, missed oh, oh, fake news over there. That yeah. was a, that's, you're losing a step. Yeah, well, you know what? I knew that I'd be making my annual appearance here. I wanted to get oh, uh, okay. the nice. hopes Sorry, up again. Buddy. I figured, you know what? It would it would overshadow yep. the news 
of him signing his contract. I was giving PFT okay, cover that week to have people mock me okay. to deflect the attention okay. that he should have gotten for his new well contract played. being I, signed Super Bowl. I, I appreciate that, Adam. Uh, it, for a second, I did think for that the uh, commanders were in the Super Bowl for like half a second. <laughs> yeah. And it made me realize that there's a big market out there if somebody just wants to create like an alternate reality NFL like magazine and have photoshops <laughs> yeah. of like the commanders in the Super Bowl or like whatever shitty team you root for, yeah. people would read that. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know what happened that night? Uh, I was trying to help you out. And I also happened to be dealing at that time with my daughter and, you know, uh, trying to get her situated for Super Bowl week and the stuff she was doing for Nickelodeon and there's a, it was a lot going on. You just yeah. say Vegas. All right, Vegas, we, we're, we're taking Stephen Chase question time. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but we had to get you you're, on that. you're probably the guy that m the most people have Twitter notifications for. So I like to – I want to peel back the onion a little bit. What? Who does Shefty have oh, Twitter oh, notifications on for? question. I got Woj. Yeah. Okay. I got Field Yates. Okay. I got Jeff I'm, – I'm very supportive of my team. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so wait. Did you take off the notifications of Diana Rossini when she left ESPN? Uh, we love Diana. Mm. You didn't answer the question. We love Diana. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. right. That's, I like that. That's Shefter's way of like, You're out of the family you know, now. No, no, no. We, we, we had a chain going. You know, it's, it's actually pretty funny. We had a chain going, a text chain, you know, with certain people at ESPN, Jeff Darlington, Field Yates, myself, a couple of our bosses, producers. Diana was brought into that chain. Last Super Bowl in Arizona. She got made. She, she was the first woman yeah. to join the chain. She broke the chain gang. Yeah. <laughs> and then when she left, we had to start a new it's chain. Yeah. That's, Damn, I mean, that's, that's brutal. Like it, right in and out. Yeah. yeah. Turned Damn. her back on you real fast. Yeah. All right. So who else on notifications? Uh, that's about it. It's about it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Another, Another question, Jay. Good and question. Then, uh, I'll end on this one is that you talked about, I think it was last Super Bowl, how you went out with. Uh, Diana and uh, Dan Orlowski and had a bunch of margaritas and had like a fun day. I want to know what is a walk me through a very a perfect fun <laughs> Shefty Saturday because all we wow. see is you know this, news is, this is the stalker stuff very fun and and please give us addresses too of <laughs> where no, you'll be Shefty, <laughs> what a normal Shefty Saturday looks like <laughs> wow like where do I even go with that. <laughs> Let's say you wake up. Yeah. What do you eat for breakfast? <laughs> I have the same. I've had the same breakfast every day since COVID began. Oh, what really? was what? it? What is it? Did you lose your taste buds or something? Yeah. You know, what? I, I used to go out like to this smoothie shop, which is out of business, and I would then I would go to Starbucks and get the same kind of. And when you couldn't leave your house for a year, uh, I, just, I wound up bringing yogurt, blueberries, and some granola. Have it every single day. That's a good breakfast. That's a good every breakfast. Every single day. In my All right. House. So you start with that, and then so a good Saturday. Yeah. You know, a lot of it is tied into uh, your family being happy, making sure that they're taken care of. Because if they're happy, then everybody's happy. If they're not happy, mm -hmm. right, Big Cat? Yep. Nobody's That's happy. That's a fact. So we start there. But if it's going to be good for me selfishly, yep. then it's probably going to be a productive day of work where you're working on some things that you feel pretty good about. Uh, you know that they'll be there for you in the morning or whatever it is on a Sunday show. And uh, also, I would say, oh, Coach Quinn. Oh, Coach Quinn. Hello, yeah, Coach Quinn. Walked in. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Left hand up. Yeah. Uh, and then I would also say some kind of fantasy success, like my NBA fantasy team this year stinks, but in other years, it's been good. And I love when I'm rolling there. And, uh, you know, honestly, playing DraftKings. Yeah, yeah. And, Love and that. Yeah. Great plug. Yes, All right. right. Well, well, Shefty, thank you as always. Yeah, the head coach of the Commanders walks in. Yeah. yeah. I get booted You're out, out of here. right? And and it, it is the draft, by the way, yeah. of Big Cat, PFT, and Hank. Like, draft goes You guys us. control this draft. We do. We do. We control the draft. You control so, the draft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. One, two, three. Yes. That's right. But, Shefty, this is, this is one of our favorite yearly traditions, so thank you as always. Uh, you're the best, and thank you for the Christmas gift. Yes, I appreciate Good it. Good one yes. this year, The right? blanket was for awesome. For a second, I thought the S stood for Schefter, that you sent me a blanket <laughs> with your initial on it. I saw it. that bullshit tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, well, wait, wait a second. Is great. just... Put a Schefter blanket in no, my we're, apartment? No, we're very happy to be on the Schefter Christmas list. Thank you. So yeah, thank stay you. On you guys, yeah. I yeah. As I say Maybe to you we'll before, and as I'll say to you again, nobody ever stops me and says, I, I, I heard the Adam Schefter podcast. Yeah. And you enjoy it. But I hear often, often, which is a testament to you guys, 
Love you. I'm part of my yeah. take. Bring <laughs> back Noah from I Adam. I do it once a year. People listen to that more than my own podcast. All right, we're going to get Che on the, on the Christmas list. You got it. You All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. We'll get it. Thanks, we'll get Adam. It. That just made oh. his life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's wrap up the show. We got Fire Fest of the Week. Uh, Hank, happy you're out of the St. Elmo's bathroom. Yeah, that was a uh, fire, fire fest. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't oh, well, gonna be. That was, that was a mini yeah. fire fest. Yeah, you guys bullied me into no. eating the uh, shrimp scampi sauce or whatever. Shrimp, shrimp scampi shrimp, sauce. Uh, it's called cocktail sauce. Shrimp cocktail sauce. Hank. Hank got up from dinner. We had a nice boys' it was hot dinner. Hot as fuck. It was. Mm-hmm. It was me, PFT, Hank, Memes, uh, Max, and Stephen Shea. And when we're paying the bill, Hank stood up. He kind of like grabbed my shoulder, and I could feel the emergency in his body like pulsing through me and uh he he was like i gotta go to the bathroom i'll meet you guys back at the hotel and i'm pretty sure you were like we sat and hung out for another 15 20 minutes and i'm pretty sure you were still in the bathroom he was, well, yeah. i i didn't so i i uh Cause we got a text like 30 minutes later being like i'm still in the bathroom no i i left my phone at the hotel because i didn't bring a charger and pft pulled a, a veteran move that i don't know if we want to you know reveal it on the podcast no, i actually don't think you should no i think we should i i want to spread this to the people okay. because this was good because we were in the lobby and we were it's both asking hack. the front desk we're like is there a place to buy chargers or i asked i was like is there a place to buy a charger on here she's like not really you got to go f- you know go to a gas station down the street it was cold and i have a jacket i was like fuck pft was behind me i go up to the the front desk and if they're cool with you, you can make this move, move work. And so I went up as, as like cool as I could. And I was like, I know you guys don't have any charges here. You don't have any in the lost and found that somebody just recently left behind, right? And the guy looked at me like this guy knows because hotels have, that's the number one thing that gets left behind Yeah, is a phone charger. Usually, I'd say it works for me like 50% of the time, depending on what your rapport is like with the person at the front desk. And the guy's like, wait right here. I'll yeah. be back. And then he came back with a charger for Hank. And, and Hank, I- Hank's jaw was on the floor. I'm surprised that you didn't know about this move already. Yeah. No, it was impressive. I'm excited to use it again. So and I also told Hank that, that I use that move all the time for toothbrushes. And for a second, he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my phone was dead. We were going to dinner soon. So I just left my phone because I had to give the charger back to PFD after dinner. So I just left my phone charging during dinner. So when I went to the bathroom, I didn't have my phone. That's there a was, nightmare. What'd there, you do? There was a stall. There was the stall was full. It was an emergency. I was like, I don't have much time here. St- there was one one stall bathroom in St. Elmo's, which I thought was crazy. Or like in this one section, I had to go to another section. There was two stalls. Those were both occupied. It was getting. I was considering having to sprint back to the hotel. Didn't waited it out. Went to the bathroom. But this whole process was like twenty minutes, mm-hmm. and we had we had we'd already paid the bill and stuff. You guys were going to party, so I was like. They're probably back at the hotel. I didn't have my phone, so I was like, I'll just walk back to the hotel. And then I texted you guys. You guys were like, oh, we're still okay. here. Okay. okay. That's fu- That's a funny move. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, how's your butthole doing? Uh, it's good. I blame the the shrimp sauce. Shrimp scampi. So wait, is that your fire fest? My fire fest was, it is combine, Barcel combine related. Um, but it's also, the, it's PFT said this, so I'm not, I'm not going to take credit for it, but it's the start of the. It was. It's, it will be the start of my documentary. Oh, mm. there's some bad film out there. Three cone drill. The athletes in you though somewhere. It is deep, real yeah. deep, real deep. Where Knuckles? is it? Big Cat's commentary was accurate, but also very mean. He what said, did I say? "Hank looks like someone who's gonna." Maybe do this fast, but he's going to look really bad doing it. <laughs> and then I took one step, and you go, yep. <laughs> what? I mean, I at least said that there was a chance it was going to be fast. It was well, fast. It was one of the faster times. For any of us that we're bloggers, we're podcasters, we're not, we don't train in like fast twitch agility drills. The three cone drill is impossible to look cool doing. Mm-hmm. It's, no, it, Max looked cool. He looked like a sumo wrestler. He was like, yeah. he was like straight. Max's whole like vibe when he's doing athletic stuff is like, if you just had a, a baby learn how to play <laughs> these sports mm-hmm. overnight, and it's just like, I, there's something about him. I'll just wa- well, he I runs on his watch. tippy toes. Yeah, right. And he's like, body's upright, and he's got the little, he's got the little man bun. It's just <laughs> Max looks good. Running on the balls of your feet is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I know. It's just very funny watching something like that. Did move. you have a good three cone drill? That was what was, uh, so it was middle of the pack. That was what mm-hmm. looked awesome. Yeah, but I, I did see Hank's three cone drill. Um, it looked bad. You should yeah, tie your no. shoes next time. Yeah, no, it was, it was it was bad. I'm not. No one no one was wrong. You know, being posted on Instagram, I, I got cooked, and rightfully so. Again, started the documentary. 
like that's that's the tape that I'll you know hang up on my on my wall and, and watch it every day because I I the training starts. Yeah, you're gonna today. hang up a tape of a digital video on your wall. Yeah, a GIF. I'm I gonna like print that. out a GIF, okay. like frame <laughs> nice. by frame. That's nice. good. Just in the comments. A flip yeah. book. <laughs> Just made a flip book. Uh, all right, PFT, your fire fest. Uh, my fire fest of the week is I uh, I tried to save the environment and I ended up fucking myself. Yes. Uh, so I have I have an electric car. Lib. Very lib of me, uh, but it's great in the city. I didn't never have to stop for gas. I cut down on my dip a lot, like Blake Bortles. Um, but I, uh, I like my car. However, I took it for the first road trip this week. I drove to Indy and, uh, upon leaving, it gives you like a calculation of how far you have left in your battery life to get to Indy. So I charged it overnight, got it up to hundred percent. I left in the morning. It told me I would have about 15% battery left when I arrived in Indianapolis. And then there's a uh, charging station right here at Lucas oil. So I was just going to hit that up and then drive back. So, uh, as I start my drive, I'd say about 30 minutes in my drive, I looked down at the uh, estimated battery remaining calculator that we have. And it says now 12%. I'm like, interesting. And then slowly but surely, every single mile that I drive, that percentage starts to dip, dip, dip until now I'm down at like 5%, 4%, 3%, 2%. So I text the group. I'm like, hey, developing situation here. Um, my car might not make it to Indianapolis and I might need to get a, a ride from somebody else to take me the last leg. So I, I go on my way and it gets down now to zero. So I'm like, okay, I'm screwed. I got to find a charging. Do station. you have extra apps open? No, I don't think that does it. It's not like uh, a phone battery. It's your car. No, it definitely it's, does it. Yeah. You have the AC on. Okay. So, so God's honest truth, Hank, I like, I'm joking about, about what you just said, but when it started to get down beneath 5%, I turned the volume on my radio down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, this, this might do it. Save it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, yeah, save I don't, it. I don't need to be blasting Mike Greenberg right now. It's just a soft, <laughs> a soft greenie would work. And uh, so I had to find a charging station on the way, which added about, I thought it was going to take about 15, it added about 30 minutes to my trip. So what, we get to the combine, Schefter's here, and I was like five minutes late getting in, and I was out of breath because I had to sprint from down the street. Also, I parked at the wrong Hyatt by mistake. Um, and I had to run we've down all, the We've had a lot of problems the with the Hyatt's here, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the fact that there are two Hyatt's within like two blocks of each other, stupid, dumbest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I tried to save the environment. Now I'm I'm going full, I'm going Taylor Swift mode. It's like get use as much energy as possible. Get a diesel truck. Get. I'm going to fly places. I, I will fly a private yeah, jet a from Chicago to Indy instead yeah. of driving my earth saving electric car. So that's what, that's what I get for trying to save the environment for our children and our children's children. Uh, fuck those kids. Yeah. Cause I'm going to be driving diesel now. Love that. Like any car should be able to go like three hours. Easily. Yeah. It or told, four. It told me I could get, I think it was like estimated 290 miles on this trip. Ended up being like 220, 210 miles, something around that. Uh, so I, I gotta maybe just get the El Camino now. Maybe yeah. that's my full-time driver. Yeah. You just get a solar. What about when when the sun's not out? It's the same problem. That's same a problem. that's a worse problem. Same problem. Same problem. Um, okay, my fire fest. Uh, I had one originally was the the war on ice cream that everyone is. We talked about it on Wednesday, but we've got new people going after ice cream. This was Jesse Waters on uh, his show, and I just I want us to just say that like they're doing this on purpose. They're trying to take ice cream for us from us, so we need to just fight. But here's what he said. Should not be licking ice cream mm. in public. Is it? Wait, hold on. A grown man, especially the president, should not be licking ice cream mm. in public. As what the fuck is that? Why are you, as a man, eating a treat? What does Meek Mill think about this? It's crazy. He yeah. probably would. Well, no, I'm not going to say. <laughs> um, He's more of a snow cone. <laughs> um, so that was my original fire fest. But then, as we sat down here today, um, my new fire fest came, and it was a text from Billy Football. With two pictures of a green van. Some people might guess what that van is. Vanny Woodhead. Two pictures and, of a ghost. And he said, do you guys want Vanny in the Chicago parking lot? Now. And this is this is all unfolded on the show. This is all unfolded yeah. on the show. Like three years probably ago. Probably three years ago. Uh, for people who don't know, I, bought, I purchased Vanny Woodhead in my name for, what was it, like 600 bucks we paid for it. I had the insurance in my name. We used Vanny Woodhead. Vanny Woodhead broke down. Vanny Woodhead sat in a parking lot for a couple of years, and finally, I was like, "I need, I'm, gonna, I need to stop paying insurance because it's just a waste of money." 
for a car that we never, for a van that we never drive. So I told Billy, like, turn in the plates. Let's get it off the road. Chop shop. He's like, no problem. I've taken care of it. And you paid. You're like, it, this is your him, job for the week. Yeah, I paid I'll give you it. X amount. You have to get it done by this date. And now, sitting here, February 29th, 2024, uh, Billy has texted us being like, oh, yeah, about that van that I got rid of. I still have it. Do you want it? Yeah. I don't know. This is going to call. I'm probably going to lose my license because he probably has it. Like, I don't know. And I said, I, I replied to him because I was like, do I technically still own this van? And he replied, technically, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's the best Billy football reply of all time. Also, in the pictures that he sent over, when I first saw these, the thought that came to my head was, these are pictures that somebody takes when they're selling a car. Yeah. There's two different angles of it. It's in a parking lot, in a, sp in a space, all by itself. I think Billy was trying to sell this car, so technically it might exist. I think the car might exist. He might not have found a buyer for it, and now he's hitting us up and be like, hey, do you guys want this in the Chicago parking lot? Yeah, so, I mean, we're going to – the good news is I, I think we're going to get it uh, after we thought it was dead. This is like a – this is like a, we're living like in a movie when the, when the main character dies and they, they're like, oh, he actually had a twin brother. Yeah, and he comes yeah, back. Yeah. That's how I feel right now. I'm like, wait, what? I we we did the whole episode where he, Vanny died, but like four times we are going to get Vanny to Chicago. We have we're in a different financial situation than we were six years ago. So I'm gonna probably put some money into this van, pimp it out, figure out how to make it technically exist again, and now we'll have Vanny back in our lives. Like this would have been. Like this trip to Indy would have been a perfect. Let's just hop in Vanny. Yeah. So we're I Vanny's back. So the best way I would think to make the car exist again, you would have to just like register as an auto manufacturer. But who owns and be like, it? I built this yeah, car. Yeah, this is mine. <laughs> who owns it? That's the part that I got to figure out. Nobody owns it. So when you when you ask Billy, like, <laughs> can how, you get it for the office? What can we do? Billy says, uh, we could put it on a flatbed to Chicago. I can look into some stuff. Yeah. So Billy's. Honestly, Billy was supposed to be looking into some stuff on Vanny Woodhead like six years ago. It's just crazy because this van was out of my life so long ago. We should call Billy. And it just all of a sudden. We should call Billy. All right. All right. Do you want to yeah, call like, him? I don't, yeah, I'll so call I don't know. Him. I'll call him. Hold on. When you got rid of your insurance and the plates. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I signed the, the car over to Billy. That's, that's what I'm curious is like, did it just. Oh, man. He was definitely trying to sell this car. Billy, hey, you're live on on PMT little podcast. Uh, what? Who owns Vanny Woodhead? Uh, technically, it's destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Le okay. Legally, it's chopped up, but I kind of I couldn't. I didn't have the heart to chop it up, so I just been keeping it. That it wait, <laughs> you didn't have the heart, or you didn't have <laughs> like you just didn't want to do it. No, I, I was like, I can't, like, I was, every time, it was an excuse I used to not follow through with chopping it up. <laughs> okay, so who, so. But you, who, did you tell someone you chopped it up? Yeah, you told us you chopped it up, but who, who, so who owns it? No one? No one. The, it's technically, like, scrap. Okay. It's a ghost car. It just hasn't been scrapped. All right, so we're. All right, I guess we're gonna. I guess we got to figure out a way to get to Chicago. We'll, we're gonna. We're gonna. But how do how do we become back into ownership? I it there. Like hey. if it's technically scrapped, how do we? Yeah, how do we get? How do we, like, bring it back to life? Well, it's just basically like trash. So like you can legally like bring trash to Chicago. Like it's it's <laughs> if I hook it up to my truck. No, no, no. But, that, but what no, if we no, want to no, drive no, no. it? That, that part we understand. We're gonna get it to Chicago. We're gonna actually. I'm actually gonna probably put money into this and like pimp it out because it'd be cool to have it. But then, how do you make it so it's not dead anymore? Oh well, then you, you just gotta get it street legal, and then get it uh, inspected. It's easy, big cat. You just have to get it street legal. <laughs> okay, all right. I got nothing out of wait. this conversation, but I appreciate it. Uh, wait, wait, Bill, <laughs> Billy. Is it? Is make it like it a title legal, is vehicle? Make it pass inspection, and then it'll yeah. be able to. You'll be able to get another license plate on it. Okay. But won't they okay. look into its past and PFT they're going to be like, wasn't his car scrapped? Okay, well, PFT has a question. Yeah, uh, Billy, yeah. judging from the pictures that you sent over, were you at any time trying to sell this car? 
No, I you, I couldn't sell it. It's trash. But it's not. I know, I know. But technically, like, I couldn't like sell it to anybody. Got it. But then, how are we gonna get? That's what. That's well, my why point. Why would I sell it? it? The pictures seemed like they were. It from, doesn't exist, PFC. Like, if how we, could he sell it? <laughs> if we go to the DMV, they're gonna look into the past history of this car and be like, "This car was scrapped. It was. It didn't exist. Therefore." This is really the, the movie where the twin brother comes yeah. back. Yeah, like, <laughs> the no, TV show, show yeah. yeah. This is Schrodinger's van. Yeah. All right. Well, Billy, um, I'll stay tuned. I'll have uh, my people reach out to your people, and we'll get we'll get Vanny to Chicago. Watch Last Chance Uganda on the Wonton Dodge. <laughs> okay. All right. Good plug. All right. See you, Billy. All right. Yeah, that didn't solve anything. We're going to um, have so many car legal experts well i'll take their us. advice give me advice because i'm going to first step is i'm going to get to chicago second step if anyone in chicago works at auto body shop or like exhibit i don't know where you're at yeah, these days like i will i will pay real money i would like to get i'm sure we need a new motor new brakes new everything um but it would be cool if we had a van that worked yeah put some shag carpeting in there make yeah. it real nice okay so we're gonna get a new van like how I heard you uh, like podcasts. I so bet I'll you put we're a gonna podcast inside your van. Yeah, I'm gonna take it to an auto body shop. They're like, "This is the dumbest thing ever." This van, like, why would you put real money into this van? No, just like you can, we can make Vanny Woodhead into like an actual very cool thing. I agree. I think it's gonna have to be taken out of the studs. There's probably some rust issues. God knows what Billy's been doing in Vanny Woodhead. That's we maybe should just burn it. Actually, now that I think about it, it might have been his apartment for a while. There might be like several reptiles still living in there. It all I remember names. there was a hole in the in the floor. Yeah, that's part of the charm. I peed <laughs> through just, that hole one time. We're driving the highway. <laughs> we're driving down the highway, and we we used to pee through that hole. Yeah, don't have to pull over. But yeah, so Vanny Bo- Woodhead. Boston back. Connor lived in it for like three days oh, in Indy. That's right. I, every time I see him on on Macby Show, I'm always like, "You lived." He in was Vanny an Woodhead. intern. And he lived in Vanny Woodhead. The Legend. um, it, it's it's actually a perfect thing for for our eight year anniversary today to have Vanny Woodhead come back to life. Mm-hmm. It's a perfect gift. I like that. So, uh, yeah, Vanny Woodhead's back. We'll figure out a way to, to fix it up. Like I said, if anyone knows how we can make it uh, real again, and then if anyone has an auto body shop or, like, pimps out cars in the Chicago area, I'm, we're ready. So we could we could do a whole video series of, of bringing it back to life in okay. a fucking sick, like, engine. We need everything new. Yeah, it's going to just be the shell of it. But uh, we're doing it. So, update. Billy just sent a photo over um, from the person that ha- now has custody of Vanny Woodhead. Hi, Will. It's someone. Is this van garage? Can I get rid of it? Is that, I think that meant to say, is this van garbage? Oh, and that happened today. That's why Billy. So Billy just gave this problem to someone else. And yeah. that person was like, hey, man, this problem is kind of annoying. Yeah. <laughs> What are we doing with Can this? Can I throw away this van? Well, okay. Billy, yeah, he's like, Can I park it here for a couple of days? And it's been two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay. All right. Uh, last Firefest, Stephen Shea. We he's been traveling with us. There's nothing better. Like Stephen Shea's whole life is a make a wish, but bring him to Combine Week is the best because he just walks around being like, Oh, there's Bucky Brooks. Oh, did you think Daniel Jeremiah took a shit in this bathroom? I should, didn't I, do that. should I sniff the, the seat? Um, he also met a guy named Joe Bucks fan last night who has a blog and it was like, it was like dueling countries. It was like a country that, that, that were about to go to <laughs> war. He was, he wasn't so warm with him. No, I mean, uh, he's that... on your turf. I didn't know no, there were no. two guys who care this much about the Bucks. There's well, a lot. There's, there's several Bucks so, blogs. So one of the most concerning several. parts of the evening last night was, uh, one of them? Che, che introduced me to a bunch of people from the Bucks front office that he's friends with. And they actually love Stephen Che. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. re- it, it makes me want to sell stock on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, <laughs> how much they like and trust Stephen Che. It's because if you if you well, know who Stephen, else would be talking about the Bucks. Well, and also if you know Barstool. Stephen Che, if you don't have to deal with Stephen Che every day, he can come across as like a normal person that you would like. Mm-hmm. And but if we like send him to the Bucks for like two weeks, they would. Se- they would send him back. <laughs> they'd be like, they'd actually take a picture of him and be like, "Hey, we we chopped it for parts. Do you want them?" Too much che. <laughs> yeah. I became. Uh, uh, we kind of look back on this finally, but I became a little bit endearing to some of the people there because the first time I ever met 
all of them really. Uh, I met the GM Jason Light. He brought me on the sideline, and uh, he was like, "Oh, why don't you meet the director of uh, pro personnel, John Spytek?" So I just turned to him. I was just like, "Hey, Steve," I was, and I go, uh, "Dude, what's going on with right guard? We got to figure this out." <laughs> <laughs> and, God, and, so and he just turns to me he goes you just get right to the point these huh? are just real scouts <laughs> nfl scouts yeah no he's a, a super high level uh person but uh yeah i uh i voiced my concerns to them they know uh jason lay was giving me shit about our right tackle who i was very nervous about this year he had a great year and, and uh what about the bucks treating families poorly and also the bucks i mean if that was family and friends it would be an a plus because i get the red, <laughs> red carpet rolled <laughs> out uh, told next year. every time but yeah if it's just biological families <coughs> i i can't speak for that because i'm not i don't qualify but yeah uh yeah they're a first class organization they actually made a statement about it the, that doesn't wow. make first class that's impressive yes well, it, we have bugs <laughs> That that First probably class. Is, that probably is a Florida thing. They I, have some like gross bugs down there. They have some serious bad bug issues yeah. in Florida. Not yeah. specifically in the stadium, but just all around. Okay, so what's your Firefest? Because I I explained Firefest to you, and if anyone knows Stephen Che, he was like, "This is gonna be tough for me because nothing really gets him down ever." But you have to have something. Yeah, I mean, it does it have to be something like recent? Because I can tell like, it, it, an older story. No, it was, it's like this past week. We, it's okay. like a way to recap the week and send us off into the weekend. You can pretend that what happened to you a couple of weeks ago just happened to you. Uh, it's like a pretty well-known story from the act with my van. but um, Wait, what? The, my minivan. What'd you do? You didn't uh, have insurance for it? Or uh, you didn't pay it? That so like I thought, years ago. and this is like kind of a yeah. Oh, this is oh, yeah. this is when you. Yeah, I, 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 I don't have to do this one because it's yeah, a yeah. story from the yak. Yeah, but if we're doing a more recent thing, no, but just say that one because it's so ridiculous, and we'll just say it very quickly. Sure. So I bought a minivan, and when you buy it, you can pay for a co- or sorry, leased it. You can buy you can pay for a couple months up front. So I did that. So I paid three months up front, but then you can set up recurring auto auto payments automatic payments auto pay mm-hmm. and cute. so i did that and i got an email confirming i did that but the email electronic mail yeah. the email's title was confirming you have set up an auto payment and so i took that as all right sweet done don't have to worry about this ever again but they were saying automobile payment I did not realize. That's, so uh, that's in, that's intentional, by the way. And he got repossessed. Yeah. Four, four months later, my van was repossessed from my driveway, <laughs> and we called the police. We thought it was stolen, and uh, they ran the plates, and they were like, "Oh yeah, this was this was towed." Yeah, you didn't pay. Uh, we, I wish it was on a, one of those reality shows for the repo guys. Oh, those guys those are the best. Those all true, by the way. They, all one hundred percent true. Uh-huh. Not staged. All right. So what happened bad this week? Nothing. You could say nothing. Uh, I mean, Donovan Mitchell, Donovan was Mitchell the worst yeah. pick ever. Yeah. It, I mean. If Double you're, over if you're time. Good, you're gonna lose 40% of your bets. Um, I can't get this band off. So these are uh, we got this, these Come bands on. and these parties. Come on. So, Come so, on. I'm so, with them. Yeah, you're in this boat too. Yeah. So they're the they're these and I've never gotten a bracelet like this where it's like this thing. There was tightens, a music festival? No, that was down. a stupid question. No, of course yeah. not. Um and I don't know, I never feel like I'm strong enough before? like this, but I I cannot rip you it. You have it. to use scissors. You can you rip it. Yes. I got No, I can't. With your hands? Yeah. You just, bite it? I just slowly went like that. Oh, I mean, mine's tight enough where it's not going to fit over the edge of yeah, my Yeah, I'll pass back. But it, I mean, you can attest. This is tough. I was trying to do this. Uh, I mean, this is, this is brutal. This is one of those I had. Oh, I had, we got scissors right there. Okay. Love it. All right. So well, thank you, War. going to save the day. I had yes. one of these on. I forget where we were. We were about to do an interview, and I tried to rip it off with my hand. Yeah, you almost broke your hand. And I, like, I think that's what injured my UCL. The yeah. first time. I remember Wait, you you're, say you're like wrist popped. Yeah. You could you could hear it on the tape. But you're the stuck in this day. boat too, right? Did you try and take that off? Well, no, I'm not freaking out because I just knew I'd cut it off eventually. Oh, I mean, but yeah, I mean, not, I, I, I have a good fire fest, Steven. I've, I've attended events before. He so. has a, <laughs> Steven has a bracelet that he can't get off. Fire yeah. fest of the week. Uh, great show, boys. Indy, Combine, always fun. It? One night in Indy. One night in Indy. We got a couple interviews coming next week for, that we taped uh, that will be great. Dan Quinn and Diana Rossini. Uh, let's kick it to ourselves in studio for the lottery ball. Okay, numbers time. Sending it into the weekend. I'll do eight. I'll do 88. I'll do 87. Okay. That does, how does 18. that hurt me? I'll do 77. Oh. Three. I'm changing to 20. Ah, <laughs> I'm changing to 20. I'm sticking with 77. I'm changing to 20. Going three. Oh, this is a lot of pressure, Max. 99, Pope. This is a lot of pressure, Max. Wow. 
67. Oh, man, if that had been 20. Love what a guys. moment. Love you guys.